Hi, Jody. Sorry about that. Hopefully that's better now. I put the wife. I forgot the. Hi, Alexandra. I forgot. Yes, I'm back. I forgot the. I forgot the Wi-Fi extender. You can tell him how to practice doing this. <laughs> going live. Hi, Sebastian. Okay, I forget. You know what? I don't even know if the person that we were gonna do is here. Hi, Michael. Or is it Mikal? Make sure I say hello to everybody. It's okay. Shit happens. You're right. Well, I will introduce myself again. We got some new people here. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Laura Lee Potvin. I am a psychic medium. I'm also a crystal Reiki energy healer, medical intuitive, spiritual teacher and mentor, registered nurse and also a radio host. I will um, <coughs> actually be restarting my show, The Angel Rock, Sunday. Hi, Lizette. Sorry about that. Um, I will be restarting my new show, or my show, it's not old, new, uh, The Angel Rock on a brand new network. Hi Pam, sorry about that. It's um, WBHM out of Alabama with uh, Kat Hobson. And uh, I would have been starting in January. Hi Michael. But what happened was uh, I've had the H1N1 influenza virus since New Year's Eve. This was supposed to be done on New Year's Day, so we're a little late. <laughs> Yes, so a uh, little out of practice doing live readings. Um, I don't normally do this. Once in a while, I give live one question readings for those of you that are just joining me because I like people to see how I work. If you're interested in booking a more longer, in depth, one on one reading with me, the information to book with me is there. Oh, thank you, Lizette. Um, things we do in my longer readings uh use things like my angel board for those of you that weren't here oh, i got that the right sorry i got my camera backwards so you guys can see this uh this will very in depth it's quite a lo large board it will give you very specific answers um so say we pull a couple cards and you need some more clarification that really clarifies things i also do chakra and crystal reiki energy healing I also can do scans long distance with people. Um, I don't diagnose even as a nurse, but I can certainly tell you areas that may, you know, suggest maybe you go see a doctor about, or sometimes um, I'm not an acupuncturist or um, acupressurist, but I'm studying that on my own. And uh, certain things we can suggest that you can work on energetically as well as homeopathically, naturopathically, medium um, as a medium. If your loved one comes through and give me messages from loved ones that have passed on on my YouTube channel. It's called The Angel Rock with Laura Lee Potvin. I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still coughing from my cold. I um, have some teachings up there for those of you that might have missed that. Um, I have a couple processes I teach called my grounding and gritting. Uh, technique really helps with stress or you're having a hard time. Um, my love shield teaches you how to kind of protect yourself. Say you're an empath or really sensitive to um, energy. You know, how to protect yourself from energy vampires and people that are negative in the world or things like that. So let's get back to our questions. I forget who the last one was when this went off. I was just about to grab this. So I know I've done Lizette and I've answered Jody's. So I don't know. It looks like we had a lot of people here and we're down to three. So um, was there anybody else that would like a question? If, if you have a question, though, the more specific you are with spirit, the more specific I can be with your answer. So is there anybody else while we're talking here? So the other thing, um, some of you know the story already. I also, um, we've been featured on this fourth season of Paranormal Survivor. It, um, it's episode nine, and I always say I wasn't looking for the paranormal. The paranormal found me. So I know quite a bit about the paranormal as well, and I also talk about on my radio show um, things like time travel, parallel timelines, parallel universes, some things that I believe are the truth. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Um, but... Uh, you might, some people call it conspiracy theory. I've actually hooked up with a couple different YouTubers. Uh, check them out if you can. One of them is called Marfugal TV. Oh, another Laura Lee. Welcome, Laura Lee. Um, and uh, John X Army. They're good friends of mine. What is your week ahead going to be like? Hmm. Niski, that's who it was. I hope she comes back. Okay, Michael, I, I mean, that would generally just be a message from spirit if that's what you're looking for. You found me again. Hooray. Um, if that's what you're looking, or is it Macau? Please let me know. 
if that's what you're looking for, um, I mean, if you're more specific, like, what do you mean? Like, work-wise? Do you mean romance-wise? Do you mean financial-wise? Um, I also, I should tell those of you that are just joining, I have about 70 different decks. I don't need them. You won't see me always use them. But when we're doing one-on-one -on -one readings here like this, really quick questions, um, I'll pull a card for you sometimes to help you, you know, just something quick for the message. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome. Um past life readings are pretty interesting. We've got uh, animal totems for those of you that might be into a little bit more different stuff. This is a really cool deck called the Keys of Arcturians. This one, just to show you while we're waiting for Michael's or Mikhail's question, it's not letting her in. Oh no, is she on my friends list, Lizette? Let me check and see if she's on my friends list. Give me one sec and see, because if she's not on my friends list, she may not be able to, um, she may not be able to get through. I'm just gonna check while we're waiting here. Okay, friends, where are you? I guess I gotta go over here. No, that's not gonna work. There we go. Yeah, just let me check and see if she's in my friends list. If she's not, she might have to send me um, a friend's, uh, I got the wrong letter here. That's one thing I don't like about this iPhone 7. Okay, let me type this properly. Yes, yeah, she's on my friends list, so I don't know why I won't let her in. Niski, you're in. Now, was it you that I had a question for? That I was answering your question. Guys, if you were in here and I didn't get to you, would you mind please retyping your question? And like I said, the more specific, Mikhail or Michael, I haven't forgotten about you. So if you just want a general message, I can certainly do that. But if there's something that you want more specifically, well, your stuff kicked in. I'm not sure what that is, but okay. Anyways, I was talking about, I know I go in a bunch of different directions. My mind works quite quickly. I was talking about this deck, the Keys of Arcturian. So if you're into stuff like this, this is actually this man by the name of, what's, he's got a different name, uh, Janosh or Janosh. He has channeled these pictures, but on the back, there's only one word usually. It'll tell you, like this one's about transition. But do you guys see that code on the back? Sorry, I'm trying to do this. It's backwards for me. <laughs> um, what you do is you take that code into a meditation and it helps you unlock part of your genetic blueprint. So it's kind of really interesting that way. So um, I'm just waiting to see. Laura Lee, I've seen your question. So hang on. Uh, Michael or Mikhail? Um, yes, Niski, if you would, please. I'm sorry because I don't know where it crashed. Oh, you used to follow Mark Fugel, Jody? He's live every night, actually. Now, you can call into his show. I've called in quite a few times and talked to him, but we're friends, him and I, so. Um, oh, okay. Michael or Mikhail, I said, if you will, um, I know you said, what does your week look like for next week? So, what does that involve? Like, Because for me, that's just a general message from spirit. Whatever comes through, comes through. If you've got something specific, like does it relate to work, to your personal life, to finances, to dreams? I mean, I've even got a dream deck here, guys. So we've got mermaids, we've got unicorns. Um, what else have we got? Uh, dolphins, fairies. Um, like I said, I've got animal cards, I've got healing cards. We've got so many different cards here. You guys can pretty well ask a question about anything. As, as I just said, Marfugo goes live, uh, Jody. I just got a message, he's live right now. He messaged me before this, because I said I might go live on YouTube, depending if anybody showed up. He goes, do it, do it. So let me just go through here, see. Oh, hi, Jimmy, Jimmy's my cousin. Welcome, Jimmy. You want those cards? <laughs> yeah, Jody, I know. Okay, I'm going to answer Niski's question. And then my, uh, Mikkel or Michael, if I don't hear from you, I will answer your question just as a general message from Spirit. And then Laura Lee, I've seen your message and it's good. We'll, do, we'll pull some healing cards for you, hon. Okay, Niski, I'm a spiritual advisor and have lost a lot of friends recently. I'm feeling burnt out in need of guidance. Right away, as soon as I read that, Niski. I'm sure you know this as a spiritual advisor, that as we follow our path, we all have a path here to follow, that especially when we're seeking one as a light worker, spiritual advisor, anything like that, where we're really trying to raise our vibration. Hi, Rick, welcome. And getting into more positivity, 
sometimes people don't like those changes <laughs> and um, I've taken quite a few courses and at first I thought no I don't want to do this but it's true hi Gwen welcome back but what you said my friends who have lost are coming to me in dreams I've got to add that okay um, what happens in some of my courses is saying you almost have to take an inventory of the people that are in your life and when we're trying to raise our vibration, people that are really negative, maybe really critical of us, really trying to you know, pull us down, sometimes we have to cut those people out of our lives. Now, does it mean that we do that with anger, hatred, negativity? Absolutely not. We, send them, we wish them well, we send them love, but we have to, I was talking about this earlier in the first live feed, was before we can give to others, we have to fill up our cup first, which means we have to have self-love. And if somebody is constantly bringing us down, we can't have those people around us necessarily. Even if we live in the same house, right? that's a little bit trickier, that's a whole different question. With them coming to you in your dreams, there's two things that came through for spirit for me. One of them is, they may still be trying to reach out to you energetically. You know our higher selves can connect through dreams, um, things like that. I mean, we're all even capable of telepathy. So I'm hearing from spirit that some cord cutting may be in order. So working with Archangel Michael, again, all in positivity, love, light. But the people that are coming to you in your dreams may still, you know, whether they're missing you physically or not, again, it's, it's easier for our higher selves to connect in the dream state. So <coughs> there's that, but also, what are they what are they saying to you in these dreams Nisky? is is it unfinished business or you know from their higher self to your higher self is a positive message so those are things you have to consider i want to go back to your question i should have i should have um i should have uh pinned it here you're feeling burnt out in need of guidance so again really looking at yourself because as a spiritual teacher we get we we get a lot of people reaching out to us a lot of people asking for guidance and sometimes as a spiritual teacher light worker somebody that you know shines your light we shine our light for other people sometimes we don't get that same thing back for ourselves so surrounding yourself with people that love you you know do we all need a pat on the back sometimes of course we do but people that make you feel good about yourself a lot of laughter a lot of joy a lot of love um, really nurturing yourself um, you know maybe now it's not so much of a time to make too many changes but really focusing on your gifts your talents I don't know if you paint or not I just got a picture of painting so you know artistic endeavors maybe that's something that brings you joy if it's exercise, anything like that that starts to bring you joy, forgive yourself, go easy on yourself. I'm hearing the words baby yourself right now. That's what you need. But Spirit's really telling me, I'm going to repeat it again, to surround yourself with people that are good to you, make you feel good. Um, doesn't have to, sorry, my cat just moved that. <laughs> it doesn't have to even come from your family unit. But um, even if you're finding even with your friend circle, maybe they're not being as supportive of you as they should be. There's a lot of beautiful communities out on um, you know social media that you can support yourself that will support you will love you will appreciate you and give you what you need right now you do paint okay that's why spirit was showing me that so getting back to that painting um still wanting to stay if you still want to stay connected to spirit I'm almost hearing that you can do some channeling through your artwork bring you a little bit of financial gain bring you a lot of pleasure but also nurture that artistic creative side so that you know just being really good to yourself is what I'm hearing um, don't know if you're able to or not but even a little vacation from life um, whether that involves you know physically leaving or again just going connecting with nature I know it's winter time right now and we've all had hellish weather from the winter unless you're in a warm place but getting back out in nature um, getting some fresh air um, really working on grounding I'm hearing for yourself as well sending a lot of that feeling that um, feeling burnt out connecting with the earth I mean, um, those of you that are new here probably think this sounds crazy. Those of you that are connected, you know, with working with spirituality or light work will understand this. But whether you want to call it the earth or Gaia, I connect with Gaia. Um, the earth's crust is meant to take in our stress, if you will. We can, we can physically just picture it draining into the earth, planting our feet on the ground. And then 
what it is, it's almost like photosynthesis, the way uh, Spirit is showing me, where uh, plants take in our carbon dioxide, use it for what they need, and put back out the oxygen that we need. That's kind of what the Earth does with our stress, any lower vibrational energy. So I really hope that helps you, hun. We love me. Oh, you're in Texas. It's not that bad there. Then you can get out in nature, girl. <laughs> okay, I hope that helps you, love. Hi, Costas. Welcome. Okay, let me go through here. I'm going to need to put my glasses back on because I'm blind. <laughs> okay, let me go back through here. I don't want to miss any questions. I hope that helps you, Niski. And for any of you that had... Oh, hi, Corinne. I didn't see you. Welcome. If um, anybody... Um, has a chance to get a reading tonight. If you wouldn't mind, I'd be really grateful if you could provide some feedback on my business page. Thank you. Because it'll really help me out so people see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm looking for Mikkel or Michael. Are you still here? I haven't seen... I'm going to go through them here just in case um, you clarified for me. I'm just going through here. Okay, snow, tons of it. Carried 40 pounds of propane. This is Michael or Mikkel. Um, I think it's Michael. One mile. Truck broke down. COP doesn't help. So I would say my cosmos got kicked in the... <laughs> Any idea when this might change? It's been a bad week. Well, we've got a full moon right now, too. And even working as a nurse, I didn't have to check the weather when there was a full moon or what the moon state was at because a lot of different energies going on. One of the things I'm feeling for you, Michael, and I don't know if you believe in this or not, whatever way of work for you, um, now's a great time to get rid of what we don't want. Um, the new moon's coming. That's when we want to set our intentions to manifest what we do want. But if there's something, you know, that you said you've had a crappy week, um, that's no fun carrying 40 pounds of propane. Um, you know, setting aside, um, even any anger or frustration with what's going on right now, releasing it with whatever way you want. Um, again, nature's a good way. Some people write it down and burn it, release it course obviously in a fireproof bowl and so you don't end up with a fire um but spirits asked me to focus on the copd for you um i don't know why but that's what they're asking me so just let me focus for a minute on you copd copd short of breath so i don't know if you're a smoker or not um i'm not going to give you a heck for that because i never used to smoke till i got with my partner and i need to quit but, um, and again, what I find with spirit a lot of times is we get a lot of the same message. It's almost like a theme when we have a group of people doing readings here. Really being good to yourself, nurturing yourself. Um, is there any way, obviously with the truck breaking down and everything else, is there any way, any kind of a creative endeavors that you do that might help you with a little bit of finances yourself? I mean, truck repairs aren't great or, you know, getting some help from people, um, I don't know if you're not following your medications with your COPD or if it's worth a visit to the doctor again because uh, that's what I'm seeing. Nothing like life-threatening, but something out there that may be able to manage that COPD a little bit better. Um, I'm going to pull a card from you from one of my healing decks here. This is called, I love this woman. This is something else I do in private readings. Um, it's called, her name is um, Ina Segal. And she actually has a book out there that I use quite a bit in my practice called, I thought I had it up here, The Secret Language of Your Body. And she goes through all parts of your body. She gives you colors that you can focus on and work with and focus that towards your body. And it may sound crazy, but this woman tells her story of what she's gone through as a latent teenager in her about 18 to 20 bedridden barely able to get out of bed with scoliosis and she used these processes herself to heal herself so she goes around the world and teaches all this and it's very simple to do um really easy to do and um she gives you something called affirmations that you can also repeat to yourself or you can write them on the wall wherever you might see them and it helps you to remind you because believe it or not our brain is not the masterpiece here. What it is is our higher self or subconscious. Our brain is almost like the computer. We're connected to spirit all the time. Higher self, I mean, um, higher power, whatever you want to call it, the universe. So um, that's where a lot comes. So that's where affirmations come in, that we can change the way that we think. And affirmations really help us with that. So it may give you a little bit of uh, help with that. Um, you can also... Hearing some relaxation is in order. 
Um, again, I'm a big proponent of YouTube with uh, going on the free meditations that are out there. If you don't meditate, I suggest it for everybody. There's every there's a lot of people that use it, and it's not just for spirituality. It's for people. I mean, athletes use it. Um, business people use it. And what it does is it quiets the sort of chatter in our mind and allows us to be able to hear, to connect with whatever you want to call it. I'm very respectful of whether, you know, some people may have different beliefs than God or may believe just in the universe. Some people may not believe in a higher power and whatever that is, that's not my business. But connecting with that nature really helps again. But it sounds like your weather's like my weather is here in Canada. So, um, just getting into a quiet space, again, I, like I said, I'm already hearing from Spirit that tonight's messages are going to be about self-love, about nurturing ourselves, forgiving ourselves, um, really focusing on what we need to heal when we have health issues. I need to hear that myself as well. So let me pull a card for you when you're in oxygen. I'm just reading your uh, steroids inhaler. Oh, I knew you were on oxygen. A near-death experience. Oh boy, we gotta talk after this, my friend, because I'm very interested in that. I believe I've had one as a toddler. So you may have some gifts. I like I said, most of you guys I don't know really well here. So um picking up you may have some gifts as well, even as a healer. Oh boy, we gotta talk after this, Michael. I can't wait to hear your story if you're comfortable sharing it. Usually when people have a near-death experience. They come back with a little different perspective than they did before it happened. So, um, so you've seen, as you said, heaven and the one. So you know he's there. You may be having a little conversation with him about helping you out with what's going on here. The other thing I'm hearing from Spirit as I'm babbling here is to take a look at this situation and what is it trying to show you? What is it trying to teach you? Because as I was saying in my previous live, that when we have crappy things happen a lot of people think like oh my you know my life sucks it's awful but if you can kind of step back from the situation see what's happening what what needs to change that's what I'm hearing what needs to change what needs to go on new and again I don't diagnose but I heard that a, a visit to the doctor may be in order I know it's a little bit more difficult in the states if you don't have insurance but if that's, an, if that's an issue, even maybe looking into working with a homeopath or naturopath into something more natural that may be able to help you with this breathing situation. Okay, let's pull a card for you from here. Hmm. That was the word I was looking for with breathing. And this, I think this is really, really appropriate for you, Michael. With the difficulty breathing, entrapment, difficult to breathe, difficult to either get a breath in or breath out. Entrapment is coming up for you. I'm going to read what this uh, says in the book. You might want to pay attention to the number 34. Uh, numerology, believe it or not, plays a big role in our lives. A lot of times we'll see numbers over and over and it's messages from spirit. I'm seeing from this woman, I'm going to look at this card. Interesting. We've got a woman laying here. We've got a man almost with a wand and a mask. So like I said, what are you not seeing here? What needs to change? That's what I'm still hearing. Let's look at the book and see if it's got anything different. <laughs> you do, do you, Pam? You think you need a health reading? Let's see. Okay, 34. I don't always read the book, but this is really intriguing me. So to me, I don't know if somebody's around you that's maybe not showing you their truth, but let's see what this has to say. It says entrapment. You are letting too many things in your environment control your life. You have drawn, I've drawn this card for you because it's time for a shift in personal power. Like I said, what needs to change? You're encouraged to take responsibility for your life and choose new ways of thinking to create that change. Interesting. I know I talked about these things tonight already. The reality is that for you to make that the changes you want, need and desire, you need a system, daily discipline and motivation. As long as you blame outside influences for any circumstances in your life, you are powerless, which we are not. The other thing I do want to remind you guys when I'm doing a reading, take what resonates with you and leave the rest. So if part of this doesn't resonate with you, leave it, as well as if somebody else is hearing this message and you feel that it really pertains to yourself, guess what? It does. That's the way spirit works. So it says, you're, you are powerless. And it says it's the government, your abusive background, the interest rate, and the bank's fault. The system 
that many ultra successful people use is they read books every day, listen to audios. Remember I mentioned about YouTube and meditation or listening to some healing um, vibrational energetic tones or usually binaural beats or things like that. You can plug those in really quiet when you go to sleep. They really help. They do a lot of work when we're open and we're in that dream state and sleeping. It says go to as many seminars as they can. These are successful business people. It says um, the practice recognizing others' achievements and form relationships with like-minded people. Now there's an action for you. Ask yourself, isn't this interesting? <laughs> I just said this to you about the guy in the mask. Are the people in my life building me up and inspiring me? If not, it's time to take charge and to start making changes in your environment. I'm also feeling with this mask guy here. Oh. I don't know if you can see them. I don't know if they're what you're surrounded by. It might be work. Sorry, it might be personal relationships. Somebody is not quite showing you their truth or, you know, hiding something from you. Nothing to be suspicious of, just to, to be aware of it. Another important action could involve changing your diet, cutting out sugar. But that's the good stuff, isn't it? <laughs> and it says food with MSG and GMO. So, um... And it says, replacing them with fresh organic vegetables. Take a moment and say the following statement to yourself out loud. This is what I'm talking about, affirmations. That, that would be the following statement. It says, I am in control of my life. Nothing can affect me unless I choose to let it. My thoughts create my reality. And I've talked about that earlier tonight about that, you know, well, even a few minutes ago about our brain is not really the one that runs our life. It's higher self or subconscious, right? We can change our thoughts. So it says, my thoughts create my reality. Keep repeating this statement until you feel stronger. Eventually you will believe it. It will help you make new choices. Remember your words and self-talk are very powerful in altering your physiology or our body processes. So let me read through here and see if that helps. Oh, hi, Paige. Welcome. I'm so glad we got different people joining. Hi, Joe. How are you, honey bun? He's a friend of mine. Costas. I'll just say Costas because I'll probably see your last name incorrectly. Okay, just let me go through here. I hope that helps you, Michael. I'm so glad you're here. Let's make, make sure I didn't lose any questions here. I don't think I did. So Laura Lee, I have not forgot you. I hope you're still here. You probably gave up on me. I tend to talk a lot, but when I get stuff from Spirit, I'm on a roll and I just got to keep going until I'm done. If you're not here, hopefully you'll catch this on the replay because I don't worry about that kind of thing. I know that if not, it'll be meant for somebody else. Now you said when my health get under control. Well, we don't have enough time here to do a scan because I could do a scan of your body distance wise, but we won't do that. Yo, you're so welcome, Michael. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you very much. I'm glad it helps. Oh, you are here. Yay. I'm glad. So, Laura Lee, I'm going to ask you, and if any of you, if I'm doing a reading for you, we can try even bringing you on, um, on camera. If you're not comfortable, I understand, but if you are. Hi, Vincent. So, when you're asking about your health, Laura Lee, is there anything in particular that you're concerned about? I'm getting a few flashes of a few things here. So I'll wait a minute and I'll read through the comments while we're waiting for a second here. I'm just going through here, sorry, trying to read everybody's. Okay, so Rick Wade was here. Hi Rick, I know I said hi, but diabetes and weight, okay. Diabetes, diabetes, let me think about this for a minute. <sighs> and being a nurse, I'm also pre-diabetic, my love, so I can certainly empathize with you. Um, I don't diagnose. I understand whether you're on insulin or not, that would be counting carbohydrates, and you'd have to do this with your physicians. Um, okay is that uh, I don't know if you've ever looked any, into anything like Atkins or um, keto diet. This is not something you should be attempting though if you're on any medication or insulin or oral um, medications for your diabetes. But working with your physician, you can find that that can be very effective in controlling diabetes. And the reason I say that to you is with us, those of us that are either diabetic, whether it's type 1, type 2, or pre-diabetic, insulin is a fat-storing hormone. 
with those of us that have diabetes or whether it's type 2, which means it comes later stage, what happens is um, our body, we almost get in a vicious cycle. We, as it starts to kick in, the issues with diabetes, it starts to store fat instead of what insulin should be doing is breaking down <laughs> our food and helping us use it as energy. So what happens is um, we need to get that in control. And so what happens is the more that you try and do, and as careful as you are, because our insulin is a little bit out of whack, or greatly out of whack, is uh, we tend to gain more weight. So like I said, this would be something to work with um, your physician if you've got somebody that's supportive or even uh, diabetic health and uh, talking to them about looking at a diet like that because carbohydrates, as even though we count them as, you know, in a diabetic diet, um, cutting out things. And again, please do not do this without unless you've spoken to your medical professional, but things like breads, pastas, um, even some of the vegetables that are a little sweeter, things like that, those all tend to encourage insulin production, which can still help, you know, cause a lot of issues. So those are one of the things I'm hearing about. I don't know why Spirit keeps repeating this to me, but they want you to be sweet to yourself. That's what they keep saying, be sweet to yourself. Um, mental health issues. Um, I don't know, again... <laughs> I keep hearing this sigh, right? I don't know when you've been to the doctor last or not, but you may want to, again, nothing life-threatening, but just maybe, you know, get a check into that as well. Um, just hearing as well, stress, major, major stress. Cortisol levels are high, I'm hearing, which goes hand-in-hand hand with stress. Um, I don't know if you're able to exercise or not, but that would really help with the, sorry, my leg's cramping on me here, sorry. I've got a bad back, so if I sit too long, sorry about that, guys. Um... Getting a little bit of exercise in the way of just getting out and walking a little bit if you can, or even an indoor place to walk. Hey, Chandra. Um, depending on the mental health issues, again, this is like a complicated thing. So depending if you're on medication or not, but some of the things that you can do without medication, really important to look into things like um, meditation. I keep hearing anxiety for you. Um, so working on some breathing exercises, there's lots of wonderful things or you can message me afterwards. I can share some things with you about working with the breath that really can be quite healing. A lot of us don't use full capacity of breathing and oxygen obviously is so important. Water, really important to be very aware of what causes you stress. And believe it or not, I don't know if you know about crystals or not. Hi, Nicole. I'm hearing some crystals for you could be really, really helpful. Really? Yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll take a drink of water since I was reminded. Hang on. There's some crystals out there that are really, really um, great at helping with grounding. Grounding is another thing you can do as well, Lorely, that can help with uh, calming, you know, or any mental health issues that are going on with you. Um, Again, because you've got quite a few health issues, I'm going to be really careful about what I suggest to you. But like I said, anything that's sort of non-medical, but really important. Again, I'm going to stress, can't stress enough meditation, um, getting enough rest, as well as being good to yourself. I keep that I'm even stumbling over it. Spirit keeps saying, be sweet to yourself. So I don't know if you've had enough time or enough to be able to nurture yourself. The other thing they, I don't know why they want me to say this to you, that your happiness depends on you. You can't depend on other people for happiness, but I'm gonna pull a card for you too, sweetie, and see what that has to say as well. I hope that helps. I'm gonna go through your comments. I didn't see anything from you. Yeah, that's, like I say, that you've got, that's tough, isn't it? keep hearing anxiety or social do you have like panic attacks or things like that that's what I'm hearing so like I said there's a lot of crystals out there it does okay yeah there's a lot of crystals out there a lot of people don't believe in crystals but believe me they've got a lot of energy I'm surrounded by them I got this guy I'm a real big selenite fan but I've got this guy and I've got this guy I mean they're everywhere around me so yeah, even when I do my energy healing work uh, that was the other thing that was coming to me, Lorely. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, it's a tough one. It really, really is. And I know it is because uh, depending on what type. So, Spirit wants you to be very cognizant though of when you, if you're really fluctuating, to be aware of those fluctuations and get some medical assistance if, if you can feel it coming on. Hmm. Now, you know what I was thinking you were saying? That I did not pick up on, so I apologize. I don't know if you're able to go for any counseling at all either, Laura Lee. But um, sometimes that can really help. There's a couple of really good books out there to be able to help you manage that. It's a lot more common than what you might think it is. Healing. That's the card I got for you, sweetheart. Number 21, so pay attention. Number 21, Healing. I like to look at this book because, like I said, with Ina Segal, she usually explains it quite well, and then she'll give you an affirmation or something because, again, we can work on that. I mean, I would never suggest it right now, but I'm really looking into the science of epigenetics, which is, I talked about this earlier, and the card said this as well, I believe it was from Michael, is we have the power to heal ourselves. Again, that's not something, you know, you're not going to go off medication or anything like that, but it's all about how we think and know that I'm not saying that somebody causes their illness. What I'm saying is when we're aware of an illness that by, um, I'm not even going to give it enough credit here, but by working with certain things and by working, um, with certain processes, sometimes we can help those things. And that probably sounds really, really crazy, but if you get a chance to look it up, take a look at epigenetics. It's pretty interesting. Okay, oh, we got the wrong card here. Hello, not 21, 23, 21. Okay, it says, ha um, oh, this guy is really being a pain in the butt here. You know what it is? They don't go by page numbers, sorry. Healing is what it is. Did I show you the card? I don't know if I did, honey. That's it right there. You can see she's got some light in her hands. And she's focusing on light. Okay, so healing. It says, illness and pain in your body is a message for you to slow down. That's what I was talking to you earlier about, you know, being sweet to yourself, you know, getting out in nature, things like that. Look within and make important changes. And again, I talked to Michael about this as well, is that, you know, with the full moon, this is a time to let go of things that we no longer wish to, you know, have on our plate right now. Well, if not, remind me, Lorley, and um, I can send you a screenshot of this. It says, if you're experiencing stress, which I was picking up, feeling overwhelmed, are suffering ailments in your body, or feeling exhausted and depressed, it means that your body is trying to communicate with you. Your body wants you to start treating it in a more loving manner. As I said, spirit must have kept, just kept repeating, be sweet to yourself, be sweet to yourself, and listening to the messages it is sending you. You need to become conscious of the areas in your life that you are avoiding or suppressing. Healing takes time. It is a process. Your first step towards healing is to create a safe, loving, supportive environment where you can listen to your inner wisdom. And again, meditation is a great way to be able to do that. So there's an action for you as well. It says take a few deep breaths and relax your body. Place your hands on an area in your body where you may have pain or you know issues with. It says ask your body. And this is important. That's what I was talking about. There's a lot more involved with this than just saying that we can change our thought processes to help with healing. It says, ask your body, is there a message you want to give me? The message may come to you as thoughts, words, images, insights, feelings, memories, etc. And before I finish reading this, if you think about it, if we've got pain somewhere, yeah, nobody wants pain. But our, our body... You know, we're not used to listening to it. So pain is a message. And it's our body saying, pay attention to this. It needs some attention, whether it's medical, whatever it is. That's why we have pain. It, um, it says, this is an affirmation again. I, I was talking about this with Michael. So what she says you can say is, I call on my divine healing intelligence. And this is what Ina Segal calls it. It just means your subconscious or higher self. So she, again, I'll repeat it. She says, I call on my divine healing intelligence to help release all pain, blockages, and density from this area. Watch and feel as dense energy leaves your body. 
then you can say, I call in my divine healing intelligence to infuse this area with that green ray of light. So you just picture green light. That's what, probably why this girl has the light in her hand. Um, I ask that all the immune mechanisms of my body be activated and my body now return to a state of perfect balance and health. And no, it doesn't happen overnight. This is something that we work on throughout the day. And it takes quite a while sometimes, but it, you, you may be able to see some changes. It says, imagine a green light moving through your body and repairing it. Gently bring your awareness back to normal and open your eyes. So I hope that helps you, Laura Lee. I'm so glad you joined me. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Like I said, I get talking and I get on a roll here. So I usually just give people whatever comes through. And as I'm talking, it'll keep coming. So let me see. Are we losing people here? Probably. Yeah, you guys are getting fed up waiting for me because I'm talking so long. Okay, let me see. I'm going back through here. Okay. Um, Pam more rice. I saw that again. You said I think I need a health reading from me. Yeah, of course, absolutely. So Michael, you said you see machinish numbers every day. Okay. Now, was there anybody else here? Hi, Nicole. Niski told me the same thing. Drink some water. Yes, I'm drinking some water. <laughs> So if anybody's new here and you're looking for, you know, you've got a question for spirit, the more specific you can be, the more specific I can be with the answer. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody here. Sorry about that. Oh, thank you, Rick. I, I think Rick's left us, but thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Yeah, we've got tons of snow here, too. It's, I think we've got more snow than we usually ever get. Oh, I'm glad, Laura Lee. I'm glad. So, like I said, if you guys got a reading tonight, I'd really appreciate if you can leave some feedback on my business page, The Angel Rock. It really helps me out, and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. And again, if you guys want to book a more in-depth one-on-one reading, and as you can see, these are free readings. So you can imagine the amount of uh, information I'm going to give you in a free, um, not a free, sorry, a paid reading. It's getting late here. I'm a night owl, though. Thanks, Laura Lee. I appreciate it. So I don't even know who we still got here. We've only got five people here, so mind you, it's two o'clock in the morning, so we can't expect everybody to be up, right? <laughs> well, it's two o'clock where I am. So like I said, I'll wait a few more minutes and see if anybody else has got a question. If not, I may head over to YouTube. I haven't gone live on there yet, and I may because I've got, um, probably be answering some questions over there as well too. We lost a lot of our people when my feed crashed here. Is there anyone coming through for me from the spirit side? Well, Pam, what I'm going to ask you is there somebody specific you want to hear from? This is going to sound crazy. Have you, have you lost a cat? I know you're looking for human, but while well, we're waiting for an answer from human. If you haven't lost a cat, you've got a cat. For some reason, I'm seeing it as gray, like a dark... Dark, not even dark, medium gray. So just waiting to see if you've got an answer. And I will pull a card for you while I'm thinking. But this little 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 kitty could be it could be a spirit guy too. You've got a gray kitty around you. Like I said, are we also also gonna do some past life readings, uh, dream interpretation. Let's see what else we got. Animal totems. Um I think what a life purpose. What else have we got here? We've even got flower therapy. If you're into intergalactics or anything like that, give you a message from them. Um, let's see what. Excuse me. What else I brought up here? Black. Okay. So is that maybe why I was seeing dark, dark to medium charcoal? I don't know. They don't know. I mean, it's in spirit, right? Well, your little one is around you. Night, Gwen. Uh, thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the friend's request, friend request. Um, dreaming about cats and kittens. Hmm. Well, have I got kittens for you? I got eight over there. <laughs> Three-week-old kittens are being very quiet tonight. <laughs> it was your daughter's. Okay. Because he, I don't know if it's hearing more feminine. Um this little one's around you so 
not a spirit guide so much, but uh, it, do you live with your daughter? Do you mind me asking if that's why this, I keep wanting to say he though. He, I'm going to say he, that's what I'm hearing, he. he. He's around you though. The one beautiful thing about cats is that even in physical form, as I've done a lot of research on this, again, I can't prove it, but cats, when they lay with us, they lay in different parts of our body. It was a boy. Okay, at first I thought feminine. I kept hearing, no, he, he, he. That's why I said, I'm going to say he. Um, what they do is they lay on different parts of our body. And the reason why, a couple of my classes have worked in an animal communication, and I believe this. Cats in particular, especially their purr, has healing um, energy with it. And has it been proven? No, they've studied it. But just the tone, like the vibrational tone that comes from it, is considered to be within the healing tonalities of when we're using energetic healing, um, like sounds and toning. And what they do is cats are very intuitive, so they know where you need healing. So even if your cat lays on your chest and is purring, maybe your you need some love or your heart chakra needs some love. So that's why they do sometimes they'll lay at the top of your head because we've got energy systems all the way through our body called chakras, right? We can't see them, but they're there. So sometimes they'll lay at the top of your head. Maybe you need a little healing with your crown chakra. And that's why this little guy is around you, working with you. So I don't know if you're needing some healing as well. Obviously, if it sounds like you must have lost a few people if you're asking if there's a message from spirit. So give me a minute, I'm gonna focus. <sighs> grandmother. Is your grandmother still alive? Or is she passed? Hey, okay, mom's side. So I'm hearing mom's side. Nope. She's not alive, I'm guessing. A lot of people have lost, yeah. You said, oh, I asked you if she was still alive, and you said no. So I'm hearing Grandma from Mom's side. Did you call her Nana? Hmm. I don't know, that's what I'm hearing. Usually I do a one-on-one. -on -one. I'll tell you right now, if I have a picture of somebody, I can connect with them like that. So, and a lot of times, especially when you've got a lot of people on the other side, they all kind of, like, come through. And I don't always see them. Sometimes I just pick them up energetically. Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know if you can see it. When I get goosebumps, that's my sign from spirit. That's just for me putting my arm on, on here. But, yeah, that's my sign from spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. This is a message from her. And she says, I watch over you every day. That's what your granddaughter calls you. <laughs> Nana watches over you every day. I don't always have to check the book, but I want to see what more is with this I watch over you every day. Let's see what else is in here. I love this deck. Oh, I didn't show you guys. This is called Talking to Heaven, and it was done by Doreen Virtue and uh, James Von Prague. For those of you that maybe don't know who Doreen Virtue was, she was kind of the queen guru of angels and, and uh, angel oracle cards. And... Um, she never really was into religion and she's had a born again Christian experience and actually renounced everything she's done. <laughs> Another ND. I'm going to have to get you guys all together and talk to talk about this because I'm actually going to do another show on that on my radio station. You don't have to be on it, but even, and I will maintain your anonymity, but sharing that with people, it's always fascinated me. I always tell the story that when I was 17 and going into university for nursing, um, I signed up for a journal, and it's just nursing whatever the year is. So when I was going to university, I was 17, so it was 1984, and there's two things, some of you that know me have heard this story before. It's always stuck with me. There was two things on the cover, and one was, why are we always eating our young? And the other one was about nurses and their experiences with their death experiences. And the first one, um, what it applied to why are we always eating our young, was addressing senior nurses and not wanting to take students and being really difficult and really awful to students. So I've always remembered that article. And I took students the whole time when I was working. I hurt my back at work. I had a patient cover a hole in his front steps with a rug. I was a community visiting nurse. So I shattered all my discs, so I haven't been able to go back to work. 
but um, always took students, always took the time to teach people because I remember that. There's nothing worse than when you're learning something new, especially as a student, and you know, you're already stressed out enough to be able to have somebody to mentor you and answer your questions and you know, walk you through different experiences that you're going to experience, whatever you're learning about. So that stuck with me, but the near-death experiences, always been fascinated by them always I do believe I had one myself when I was about two about two years old um, between two and three it had a fever of 106 and I kept seizuring and we happened to be living in a city called Sault Ste. Marie at the time and they kept sending my parents home with me and then the last time I seizured in apparently in the emergency and they took me in the back room my parents don't know what happened but they weren't allowed to be back there for about an hour. Um, they just said it was really bad. The seizure didn't tell them anything. But I do believe I had a near-death experience because I was in the hospital for about three weeks. And from what I believe, from what my mom said. And I used to have curly hair. It's come back. But for the longest time, my mom said the next day my hair went all straight for years <laughs> after that. It was really weird. Anyways, I've worked really extensively in palliative care. And I'm actually looking for a program right now to train as an end-of-life midwife because I really have um, really have an affinity and a lot of love and respect for families that you know used to want to have me there at the end of their family members life you know I used to go out in the middle of the night or whenever so when people would choose to die at home so I've always been deeply honored by that so let's get back to your message it says I watch over you every day as I'm babbling here there we go. Okay, so part of this message is, believe me when I tell you that I hear every one of your thoughts and know all of your life's desires, goals, and accomplishments. We have such a strong soul connection that part of my desire here is to watch over you there, even though I can't take your tests for you or interfere with your free will. I am sharing your space and I'm always influencing you to do the best that I know you can do. I help bring into your life those important learning opportunities your soul needs in order to grow. So remember, I'd mentioned earlier if you were here, that sometimes when crappy things happen, they happen because it allows us to grow. It says, think of me as your guardian angel. We share life together. I am the light that goes before you, holds your hand, and shows you the way. So don't be surprised if a thought about me suddenly comes into your mind, seemingly at random. That is me standing next to you, letting you know that I am still with you. The other thing I always tell people that have lost somebody they love, of course we'd always want to have our loved one in physical form. But our loved ones never leave us. They are always around us. There is no space or time on the other side. They can be in many places at the same time. So they're there for every celebration. They're there a lot of times when babies are coming. They hold those babies before and kiss them. A lot of times they'll show me that. Before that baby is born, um, they hear your thoughts. So, you know, you can still talk to them. You can still think about them. Like you said, you've, I'm so sorry for your losses that you've lost quite a few people. But um, you can still talk to those people. They'll hear you and they're around you. And uh, ask for their help if you need something. And they'll do their best to be able to help you in any way they can. So I hope that helps you, Pam. Thanks so much for asking me to do your reading for you. I'm just going to see. And you're dreaming about cats and kittens. Hmm. I'm hearing that you may need a little bit of healing. You have a... Gr I was going to ask you if you had a baby coming. I was going to ask you. That's why I brought that up. But I thought, no, I'm not going to ask. Well, know that your loved ones are there looking after that little soul. And they will lovingly hand that little soul over as she's being born. They all kiss, kiss these babies, hug them, wish them well, and they're in their lives. So know that you've got a lot of loved ones on your side looking out for you and your family. And I hope that helps, my love. So I don't know if we've lost everybody here. We've got four people still. I haven't seen any more questions. So definitely... Um, if you need some healing, that's why I keep hearing this this little black cat that's around you. That's what his little job is around you. So you may want to um, talk to, you don't have to talk to them either. Like those in spirit can hear from the other side. So 
Sure, Lorelei, you can ask a question. I don't see anybody else asking questions, so sure, go ahead. Ask away. I miss, I used to do this every week in a group. I'm no longer involved with that group and I miss it. So I'm trying, as I start feeling better, I'll be doing this a lot. Not so much free readings, but doing some lives and some teaching and stuff, especially on YouTube. Health, yeah, that's what I kept hearing about the healing, that he's working with you in that perspective, love. Hi, Juicy, welcome. We're just doing um, one question readings to spirit. So the more specific, if you want to ask a question, um, the more specific I can be with an answer from spirit. And you can ask a question about anything, past lives, we've got mediumship readings, we've got you're into intergalactics and healing questions, we've got, uh, what else have I got here? Um, spirit guides, animal totems, I think I said dreams, we've got just about anything. You're so welcome, Pam. Thanks so much for asking. You're going to have to let me know about that baby. I can't wait to hear. Okay. Well, this sounds like... Okay, let me read your question, Lorelei. Um, Nicole, I'm going to ask you your question next, okay, my love? Okay, my best friend's... Um, thanks, Pam. Okay, my best friend's mom is dying of cancer in the hospital. I went to visit her last week. But she's at the end stages and deteriorating fast and is confused. Okay, my love, what, what did you want to ask about that? I have a lot of experience with that. Well, I'm waiting for you to type that. Nicole, how, how about I pull a card for you, okay? And then we'll answer Laura Lee's question. Okay, so we're going to use my favorite deck and just, oh wait, okay, wait, Laura Lee answered, just asked it and then I will get to you. Okay. I wanted to go see her again this weekend and my friend says her mom is confused and so maybe not a good time, but I think I still want to go see her. Should I go? I guess what you need to ask yourself, Laura Lee, is um, be honest with yourself. Um... And really ask yourself, why do you feel like you need to see her? And I don't mean that with any judgment or, you know, being nosy, but asking yourself that, what is that within yourself that you need to see her for? Because maybe your friend wants you to remember her the way you saw her. Sometimes it can get pretty bad towards the end of somebody passing away. Um, the other thing is, um, I call it the calm before the storm. It doesn't always happen, but it happens a good portion of the time. I've seen it so many times where somebody may, it may be five minutes, could be an hour, could be eight hours. Somebody that's really palliative when someone's in the state that your friend's mom is and they're deteriorating, they're confused, they're not eating, they're bare, you know, they're basically almost in a coma. A lot of people wake up. I call it the gift. They wake up for whether, like I said, it's five minutes, um, could be an hour, could be eight hours, and they're able to kind of say their final goodbyes and be able to have that close visit with the family. So that's what spirit is is suggesting that you ask yourself, what, why do you feel this need that you have to go? Are you worried that? And I'm just just putting it out there. No judgment, no nothing. These are just certain things spirit's asking you to ask yourself. Are you worried that if you don't go, that you'll feel guilty? Are you worried that you'll think that, you know, she may think that you weren't there for her in the end? Because um, spirit keeps showing me. And again, we are all one on this planet. We're all part of each other. We're all connected to source energy. That's why I said sometimes in the dream state, it's a lot easier to connect with somebody. Maybe set that intention before you go to sleep at night. If there's some things that were left unsaid, you know, set that intention to maybe do that work while, you, you know, while you're sleeping. You can connect with her higher self. Or maybe even write her a letter, right? Write the letter. You can have that conversation with a photo with her. Believe it or not, photos hold the energy of the person that picture was taken of. So that's something I can't tell you yes or no. But I guess you got to ask yourself. If you see, you know... And, and she's no longer the person that she was. And like I said, it's not always pretty when someone's passing away. 
are you going to be holding that image in your mind always of what you saw versus the beautiful, vibrant person that she was? Our bodies are just shells. That's all they are. We go on forever. Our souls really, really do. And you know what? So that, like I said, I can't answer that for you. Uh, I don't think anybody can answer that for you. I think that's a conversation that you need to have with yourself and, and, and find out what you need from that. Like, what, what are you... What, what is the need to be able to go? Be honest with yourself. That's what I'm saying. Do you feel some guilt about what wasn't said, what maybe needed to be said? Write her a letter. It's okay. And like I said, once we do pass away, our loved ones never leave us. And um, you can just think that conversation. She can hear it. And I can tell you a hundred times when I've done mediumship readings for people, so many people say they, they hold so much guilt or sadness or pain about that they weren't there. They weren't able to get there in time. or they, you know, they had an argument before the person passed away. I can guarantee you, I've yet to meet a person that holds a grudge or is angry on the other side. They're able to see all. They're able to see from all perspectives. Again, this isn't about me, but I'll share this with you. My mother's grandmother was not a nice per mother was not a nice person. Neither one of them were overly warm and fuzzy. And when I took my mediumship course, I was working with a mentor out of Los Angeles. And what we would do is, um, uh, she would connect me with a student I'd never met. We just talked for 30 seconds and had to do readings. More often times than not, my grandmother would come through. And there's a friend of mine. She might have popped off of here already. She's seen her here numerous times. In the beginning, I used to say, what the hell is she doing here? And you know what? She's different than what she was in this lifetime. Um, she's able to see all. She's able to see who she was versus who her true higher self is. And she's here just to keep an eye on her family. She adored my two sons and she pops in from time to time. So, like I said, maybe write her a letter, and um, because I'm going to tell you right now, if there's something that was unsaid that you feel you may need to say, even though people can hear us in that comatose space, she may not be able to process it until she passes over. So she will know the love that you have for her. She will know whatever that was unsaid that you might have felt that you needed to say. There's there's no need for guilt because they don't harbor those kind of feelings for us over on the other side. It's nothing but love. Love, forgiveness. It, 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 I don't even have the words to express how beautiful it is for people on the other side, how they are with us. So, like I said, see how that goes for you, love, and, and, and have that conversation with yourself and see what, you know, maybe why you want to go. And then really be honest with yourself. What memory do you want to hold of her when she does pass away? You know, do you want to have that that memory of her being so, so, so sick? Or do you want to hold that up of the loving, vibrant person she was? I'm glad that makes you feel better. I send you so much love. And I'm so sorry you guys are going through this right now. You're welcome. Nicole, I was going to your reading. Will you find true love soon? We're going to pull my cards out for you, but I'm hearing a lot of things for you. I'm hearing, and sometimes, like I said, you may have been here earlier, you might have just joined in. We've talked about love tonight. Sometimes there's themes that come through with spirit. It's really putting yourself out there, um, trying something new. Maybe there's a type that you have or same type of person you're always drawn to really looking at and what spirits are asking you to do and I tell a lot of people write this down on paper even and be super honest um, what are you looking for okay we live in a the, this universe this 3d existence on earth is an existence of manifestation what we put out there is what we manifest what do you want and you say true love how do you want to be treated? There's a book out there, The Five Languages of Love. I reference it often. Do you need to be told that you're loved? Do you need space? Do you need your partner to tell you that, you know, you look fantastic, compliments, gifts, whatever. This is just between you and the universe. Be very specific. You're even looking for whatever, physical attributes. What are you not wanting if you don't know what you want? Sometimes it's easier to start with, 
What do you not want in your next partner? Put that out there. Make a list. And when you're specific what you want, focus on that. Focus on that with love, with positivity, if you and and really watch the words that you choose that I'm never and again no judgment I'm never gonna find love all perspective partners whether it's male female whatever it is they're love they're they're assholes there's nobody out there that's good anymore there's nobody you know every time I try all I keep meeting is jerks blah 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 because it's really cool I'm gonna give you this example with the universe and I'm still working on this too when it comes to manifestation but you went to a restaurant and Say it was just a pasta restaurant, like they had thousands of different kinds of pasta. And you walked in the restaurant and said, I'll have pasta. And the waiter says, well, what kind? Well, you know, pasta. So he keeps bringing different dishes of pasta, different dishes of pasta, different dishes with sauces and sauces until he doesn't know what dish to bring you, right? He's just gonna keep bringing it until he finds the right thing. That's kind of how the universe works. The more specific we are, Versus if we walked into that pasta restaurant and said, I'm going to have rotini and I want bolognese sauce. I want Parmesan cheese on top. I don't want it too spicy. I don't want too much garlic, blah, blah, blah. Do you hear what I'm saying? So be really, really specific with what you want. And put that out there. Focus on what you want. And again, when I said focus on what you don't want, that's if you're having a hard time making that list. And again, this is just the list between you and the universe. So you can be as honest as you want. If there, and, and again, be really, really specific because the more specific you are, the more specific it is for spirit to bring that to you. And then, like I said, when you know what you do want, focus on that with positivity, love, okay? Really, really trying to catch ourselves when we say those words that there's nobody good out there anymore. There's nobody, I'm never going to find love. I'm never going to find whatever. Yes, I'm worthy of love. Yes, there are... How many billion people do we have on this planet? There is somebody out there that is the perfect match for you. There's many probably. Also putting yourself out there in, in things that you wouldn't have tried before. Things that have always interested you. But you've never had the guts maybe to try it or the time or anything. As well as this is a time to really focus on yourself. Loving yourself. Working on issues. We all have issues within ourselves that we can make ourselves better. That we can focus on really really nurturing you so that you are the best version of you that when you meet that true love of yours you guys are on the same plane I hope that helps I'm gonna pull a card for you too sweetheart okay yeah I was wondering if this was gonna come up <laughs> past life relationship you've known each other before so there's somebody either around you or somebody you're going to meet that you've had a past history with before, many lifetimes before. Let's see what else this book has to say. Because I know, if I'm not mistaken, I've gotten this card for a few people before. You, what I'll say is I'll read the book, you see what resonates with you, or kind of fits with you and what doesn't, and take it from there. So, past life relationship, you've known each other before. The romance angels have sent you this card to explain the relationship you've inquired about. So, true love. You have some unfinished business in, con in, yeah, in conjunction with a soulmate from a past lifetime. This may involve forgiving someone, a joint project, or learning personal lessons such as patience. Soulmates, and there's a difference between twin flames and soulmates. I mean, friends, children can be soulmates. It doesn't have to be a love relationship, so remember that too. Soulmates recognize each other instantly. And this is talking about a romantic soulmate. It says, and this feeling is often registered as a sense of romantic or sexual chemistry. The magnetism that draws two people together can surpass logic because the purpose of the relationship is healing and learning. Whether or not your soulmate becomes your life partner, you'll experience personal and spiritual lessons and growth as a result. Past life regressions can also help you uncover the answers you seek. So that's why I mentioned sometimes it can be children, it can be friends, it can be even co-workers can be soulmates. Because a lot of people get soulmates mixed up as just a uh, romantic relationship. So um, that part of this thing though about unfinished business is spirits asking you to look at your past relationships. And we talked about this earlier in my first slide before it crashed. 
And I, I give this advice to a lot of people. There's past relationships we've all had. There's a reason why we fell in love with them in the first place or we're attracted to them. Take the good that you got from those relationships. Letting go of the hurt, forgiving that person may involve some cord cutting. If you're not sure what that is, you can Google it or um, there's all kinds of things out there on cord cutting, working with Archangel Michael. Um, cord cutting doesn't mean cutting that person out of your life. We all develop energetic cords to each other. Every single person that you connect with. And those cords are there even long after a relationship is gone. That may involve cutting those cords, which means that we're not cutting the person out of our life, but we're cutting that connection to that person so that, you know, every time we think of something, you know, sometimes people get hung up on an ex or whatever that helps let go of that, that relationship a little bit. We send them love, we send them healing, we send them forgiveness, and we wish them well in their life. And um, that may help. But really working on yourself is what I keep hearing. So being good to yourself, loving yourself, nurturing yourself, um, surrounding yourself with things that make you feel good. Because when we feel good and we're enjoying life, we almost get that natural glow about us. Have you ever noticed that, Spirit doesn't always show me this, but whenever we're in a relationship... That's when you have like 20 million people always wanting to connect with you versus when we're single. It's like we just, it's like drier than the Sahara Desert. Part of that is we're a different person when we're in a relationship and we're happy and we're fulfilled. We put that energy out. People are attracted to that. And I'm not saying that we don't have it when we're single, but when we're looking for love and see we keep getting burned, right? Then we almost have that wall up around us. So it's harder for people to see that light that you shine. So that's why by working on yourself, forgiving yourself, taking ownership and maybe some of the things that went wrong in past relationship ships, forgiving them, forgiving you and um, yeah, really working on and nurturing yourself. So I really hope that helps you. Thanks so much for asking me to do a reading for you. Hi Rhonda, welcome. We're just doing a few one card readings here. So um, from Spirit. So if you have a question, feel free to ask one. Um, just make, um, the more specific that you are with spirit, the more specific spirit can be with the answer for you. So I hope that helps you, Rhonda. Um, sorry, not Rhonda. Ugh, it's getting late here, sorry. I hope that helps you, sweetheart Nicole. So it's frustrating when we're trying to find that right person. I'll drink some water while I'm... Uh, Waiting to see if anybody else has any more questions. Thank you so much for being here tonight, guys, on Friday night. I really appreciate this. I enjoy doing this for you. We don't know a whole lot about chakras, but I keep getting messages about them. Things keep popping up everywhere about them. All of, all of a sudden, so odd. What Does that mean something? Of course it means something. So I'll explain a little bit about chakras. I'm going to do a video on this on YouTube. I have a lot of teaching videos up there. What it is, is we have energy centers called chakras. We have, please wait. So root, just let me count these here. It's late. Root, sacral, solar. Well, I might as well go through them. Okay, so we have a root uh, chakra. Color red is associated with that. It's usually with uh, physical safety, security, things like that. We have a sacral chakra, which is just around where your tailbone is. That's associated with the color orange. That can have a lot of things to do with, um, keep hearing things like um, your sexual health, um, you know, fertility, things like that. Because the chakras are also associated with emotional, physical, energetic areas of our body as well. Then we have the solar plexus, which is right here, which is yellow. That's kind of like the master decision makers where our self-worth, our self-esteem, things like that come from. Then we have the heart chakra, which is where our heart is. That one too, uh, can be either green or sometimes pink is associated with it, with it. obviously love. Um, yeah, love, things like that. Then we have the throat chakra, which is responsible for our voice and I'm not talking about just our voice I'm talking about speaking up for ourselves standing up for ourselves doing it with love positivity things like that then we have a third eye chakra 
we're getting into the higher astral realms now, getting away from a lot of the physical things that I was talking about. We all have a third eye, well actually right here, and it um, works in conjunction with our pineal gland, or pineal gland, which is part of our inner, inner, inner brain. That is how we connect with spirit, with uh, source energy, God, universe. We are all capable, I talked about earlier, about us being capable of connecting with, um, you know, doing telepathy, things like that. We are all capable of so much more than we've been told that we can do. Then that one is, a, so, sorry, I didn't say what color. This is like a light, almost aqua color, our throat chakra. Third eye chakra is like a violet almost color. And then our crown chakra, top of our head, is connected to source energy. It's what connects us to our spirit guides or angels, things like that. It's usually a white color. Um, our chakras are available in the front as well as the back. They almost like funnel out. And they're very, very important. So say a lot of times when I do crystal Reiki chakra therapy with people, I use something called a pendulum. And I can go through your chakras and find out whether they're um, overactive, underactive, whether you're avoiding something as well. It usually relates to issues going on in your life. Sometimes, are, and they're all meant to run energy, okay? So we're meant to run source energy all the way through our bodies, right down to the ground. We're meant to be connected to the ground. I call it um, Gaia, it could be called Mother Nature, the Earth, whatever you want to call it. Um, we also have other chakras. The, there is the Earth Star Chakra, which is below our feet, about six to eight inches, which connects us even further to the Earth, as well as we have the Soul Star Chakra, about this high, and they actually even go higher. They're finding more and more chakras. Um, we have chakras in our hands. When I do a chakra reading um, with people, um, usually when I do the first one, I suggest from the front and back, I help you balance them with crystals and directing energy, as well as using Reiki. Um, I can pick up past lives from behind your ears. Believe it or not, they have chakras. <laughs> so there's quite a bit of information with it, but the main thing is, is you wanna try and keep those chakras balanced and not overactive or underactive. Um, there's a lot of good meditations that are out there. Um, it's really important to be working with them, and a lot of people aren't aware of them. But if you think about it, and I come from a science-based background being a nurse, everything is energy on this planet, everything. And we are meant as human beings to be able to run energy. So that's probably why chakras are coming up for you a lot, Pam, is because your, your guides, your angels are asking you to pay attention to them that they need some work probably so that's probably why and that's the other thing I don't believe there's any coincidences when we uh, for me when I touch just teach this to most people when you've heard something more than once and in a very short period of time and it keeps repeating over and over that is your guides or spirit <laughs> trying to get your attention hello that's why it keeps coming up in your field I want you to pay attention to this because spirit, for a lot of people, tends to speak in symbols. I mean, there's a bunch of different gifts that we have. You can be clairaudient. I'm very, very clairaudient. I hear my guides all the time. No, I don't hear strange voices. <laughs> um, clairvoyant, we can see spirit. Um, when I was talking to you about that cat, Pam, I even have pictures of a friend. Um, when I was talking to her on Skype, I could see her cat that had passed away on the pillow next to her. I have pictures of it. So you um, can see, um, clear cognizance is just knowing, like you just know, you don't know why you know, you know. So there's so much like as you know, you start to learn about this, like I was saying in my earlier video, I don't know if you were there or not, but I believe we're all capable of this. I believe that, um, you know, we have a sixth sense. Um, think about it, how many people, maybe yourself included, have said, I'm gonna trust my gut on this. Or I feel it my gut, I don't know why I feel it, or I know it, but I just don't know why I know it. So if you think about it, we only most of us only use about 10% of our brain. So imagine, imagine if we even used a little bit more than that, what we'd be capable of. It's our beliefs, I believe, as well as emotions, sometimes energetic, energetic and spiritual things we encounter that are self-limiting for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I hope that was a quick rundown on chakras. There's a lot more involved with them. There's lots of great meditations. Again, um, a lot of people say they can't meditate. 
I, I haven't put it up yet, but I have a meditation that I do, a guided one with people that I walk you through it. Oh, hang on. Somebody just sent me a friend request because they can't get in here. Just hang on. Sorry, guys. Um, remind me if I forget it's about the meditation. So hang on. Who is this person? I better see who they are. I don't just bli I I'm not a word of a lie. I don't know what the heck is happening here, but I am getting... I think since the beginning of February, I've had 400 friend requests. It's just crazy, like every five minutes practically. And they're not, all, they're not all regular people here. Some people are a little odd. You're not gonna let me see your profile. I guess I gotta accept you, okay? I like to look at people, sorry about that. Um, oh, I think it'll be okay, sorry. I gotta just accept your friend request here. Oh, sorry, I gotta go to here. I've got too many devices going here. Okay, there we go, honey bun. Added you. Um, sorry, see I said you were gonna have to remind me what I was talking about as I get. Oh, meditation, that's it. Um, so, well, that's the thing. It's not hard to meditate. It's hard to quiet the mind sometimes. So what I've I found is I've created almost like a guided meditation that will get you into a safe spot. It'll get you there quickly with visualization and it's your spot that I help you create through this guided meditation as I walk you through it so that it involves either stairs or an elevator getting down there very quickly. So you get into that space and people think you need to spend hours and hours meditating. You don't. And for me, I actually prefer guided meditation. Sometimes I won't. Again, um, I have no, I promise I have no shares in YouTube, <laughs> but YouTube has really great meditations on there that don't cost anything. You can find, how do I open my third eye? Hey, Steve-o! Um, talks about chakras, talks about anything you can possibly, there's pain relief, there's everything you can possibly think about. You think this is odd, Michael? I don't know what you think. Hey, Kelly! So there's all kinds of things on there, but believe me, if, if it's coming into your field of vision, there's a reason why um, your guides are wanting you to pay attention to your chakras. So check it out. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a video on YouTube. I've got some that I taught from classes. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Hugs to you too. Steve and Kelly are friends of mine. They're fellow Ontarians. They've been on my radio show before. So um, they've got a great paranormal channel. So if you check it out, SNK Paranormal on Facebook, they do live ghost box, box sessions. Very positive, light and love. That's what I love about it. So um, check them out. They usually, they've got a group too and they go live in there. They connect with different um, people that have passed on, some famous, some just whoever comes through. Well, I'm glad, Pam. Like I said, check out my YouTube channel. There's some teaching up there. I'm trying to remember what I put up this week, finally. It was really growing. I started it in December, and then with being sick for the last month and a half. Oh, some of my, yes, yeah, some of my requests were odd. Okay, you, I did, Michael. See, I'm babbling here. Yes, you would not believe what some of these odd requests. And I, I was hoping some of them would show up here, to tell you the truth. I don't add everybody. But I've got, like, uh, not a word of a lie. I, I Sometimes I get, like, 30 messages in a day, and then they want to play friends and whatever else. And I've tried to explain to people without being rude. I mean, I don't even get to talk to some of my closest friends because once I start doing uh, my radio sh show live again every night, I have to come up with a new show every night. Um, never mind meditation. I'm trying to do a YouTube channel. I'm trying to run a business. I'm trying to uh, write three books. And on top of that, like I said, I have a son with severe autism. He's going to be 21, but with no disrespect, he's very much like having a child of five or six years of age. Um, so you see me live, you had to come on. Thank you. So I just, I don't have time to sit and chit chat with people. Like I'm rarely on social media. Like I'll have people, like I am, but I'm not. Um, I might check in quickly and then I'm off doing something else. So I just, I don't have time. And I've had these now I know, like I always did check people out before and I've had a stalker that started on Twitter and he had this thing for light workers. So far he hasn't tried again, but he would send me like 10 friend requests in a row. He's kind of seemed to have settled down, but you get these guys and you see their profiles and 
I don't know why it seems to be people involved with the paranormal that they're adding me because you can see their friends list and then the whole profile is about naked women and stuff like why would I want to add you um, no thank you <laughs> I even changed my profile it said that I was in a relationship to be right up front here because like I said I know we sometimes get some of these odd ones but they're like I said I I don't know what the, I even got blocked by Facebook the last week twice because, like I said, not a word of a lie, I've had between four and 500 friend requests since the beginning of February. Like literally, sometimes 30 to 50 a day. I don't know why. I don't know where these people are getting them from or why or how. I've never had this happen ever on Facebook before, so it's really weird. Mm -hmm. So we're just about done here, Kelly. I think every, well, we got five here. If anybody else has got a question, Otherwise, I'll probably um, go sit down and uh, relax for a little while. Mm -hmm. We had more people in the beginning about, um, and then my, I put my Wi-Fi extender on because our Wi-Fi is notorious for doing that. It's unlimited. And so with it being unlimited, everybody's got unlimited, so it's not that stable. Yeah, Nicole, I'm not kidding. Like, I was... What had happened to with this guy that was stalking me? He was stalking me. This was about a year ago, though. And he he probably tried it for about six months. I even called the police. But he was going on all my social media profiles. And then one time he added a couple people that I knew that were in the light worker field. And he got a hold of all them. Because he would use, like, fake profiles. Now I'm pretty good at sussing out who has a fake profile because I've figured it all out, like what to search and stuff. But what this idiot did, and he, um, I don't believe he had been on my Facebook profile by then. He went into my Facebook Messenger, stole my Facebook Messenger ID without being on my friends list, posted it on an escort and stripper site. I live in Ontario, Canada, of all places in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I'm getting all these requests from guys um, finally, I had one nice gentleman. I was sitting with my youngest son at the cancer clinic at the time. My son was really sick last year. And he told me how he had found my name. I had to send them a letter from my lawyer to get it pulled down from this. It was, I can't even remember what the hell this site was called. Um, I, I was absolutely disgusted. Like, why, that's why I called the police. And um, they told me to get off social media. That's really going to help. <laughs> Anyways, okay, Steve, oh, I see your question. Okay, any messages? So I guess you just want a, a message from Spirit. Yes, Nicole, not a word of a lie. And that wasn't even when our Paranormal Survivor episode was out. So I can't even say it came from TV. This all started on Twitter. Yeah, it was scary because um, I'm a real huge, huge fan of Supernatural. It's the only TV show I watch. And he tried to pretend he was one of the actors from there. He couldn't speak English. He can't speak English. He uses Google Translate, you can tell. And um, he tried to pretend he was one of the actors from there. <laughs> Hello, I'm not that stupid. I know if it's an actor, they're going to be verified. Then another time, for some reason, he decided I like country music. Now, nothing against people that like country music. I'm just not a country music fan. The reason why my... my uh, business is called the Angel Rock is because I work with angels. I love rock music. I love skulls. I'm not I'm not a goth chick. I just love skulls and um, love crystals. So that's why it's called that. Hi, Vicki. How are you? Holy cow. We've had cousin Nate tonight. <laughs> this is my cousin. Um, okay, Steve-O, so you said you just want a general message from Spirit. So anyways, that's my horror story for um, what's been going on with Anyways, I think he's kind of given up, but like I said, I even called the police, and the police were no help. So, but of all places, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and he didn't, I mean, he wasn't able to steal any profile pictures. He just took my name and my ID, and of Kalamazoo, Michigan, an escort stripper service of all places. He's a jackass. Okay, Steve. I don't know why, Steve-O. This is going to be odd. Past lives. I don't know why. That's what I heard. I don't usually pick that for just a general message from spirit, but so <coughs> the stalker diaries. Well, I am writing, I am writing three books actually, Michael. I am. 
So is that my fourth one, the Stalker Diaries? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what it'll be. So just, oh, I don't know. Like I said, like, and then the messages that they send, like, it's like, I would never, if I was single, write a mail or anybody some of these messages. <laughs> it's just gross. It takes all kinds of people to make the world go around, I guess. Okay, Steve-O. I don't know why past lives came up for a general message from Spirit. I do believe this is your card. It jumped out. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Persecution and Inquisition. Hmm. I'll show you guys. This one, I, I always refer to the book because they don't give me much information. But this doesn't look like from the witch trials, to tell you the truth. This looks like back in the times of Merlin. Interesting. I'll have to see what it has to say. Okay. So, steve -O. Persecution and Inquisition. I drew this card for you as validation. Well, they're saying witchcraft. As validation of your suspicions. You were accused of witchcraft, being a heathen or other crimes in the past. As I said, I don't pick this up as, as like from Salem or around that time. It's It was earlier, a couple hundred years before. It says, you suffered greatly as a result of the ensuing persecution and the fear has carried forward into this life. In the past, your character and behaviors were examined publicly and you were blamed for crop failures and deaths that had nothing to do with you. Your neighbors and the government said that you were casting spells, which was a capital offense. In reality, you were a good-hearted person as you remain to this day. I was just going to add that. <laughs> um, who had the ability to see into the future and to use energy for healing purposes. Kind of similar to what you do now, Steve-O and Kelly. Both of you, but Steve-O too. That lifetime has made you very sensitive to gossip and rumors. If someone falsely accuses you now, you become fearful and upset because that's the behavior that led to your painful death in previous lives. You may also be afraid to openly admit that you're still a talented healer and psychic. Unconsciously, you're keeping your spiritual skills a secret to avoid recreating the pain of the past. I'm, I, before I go on, Steve-O, I'm hearing that uh, past life regression, like hypnosis, there's a really good one in your area, actually. If you guys look up Haley Reese on YouTube, she's got, uh, she taped it all. And believe me, if I lived in Southern Ontario, I'd go see this lady in a heartbeat. She's amazing. She's also a Reiki healer and um, I believe a psychic as well. She's really, really got a nice energy about her. Okay, so to heal from this, know that in this current lifetime, spiritual teachers and healers are revered instead of feared. You agreed to incarnate at this time because your hard-won knowledge from previous lifetimes is needed in this world. And the fact that you're back on earth shows that no one can harm you permanently or prevent you from pursuing, I uh, can't talk tonight, from pursuing your spiritual path. Yeah, because I'm getting that, I'm getting this isn't even just the picture, but I'm getting that this has to do back with, um, you know, times of Merlin, probably 1400s, 1500s. So I may even not be in the right um, time era, but that's what I'm getting. So. I don't know if that helps you or not, but that's I, that's a weird one for me to pick for Message from Spirit. I don't usually pick that deck. That's what I heard. So, Kelly, are you next? Do you have any questions at all? Any at all or anybody else? So, as I was telling all my stories, does it make sense? Yeah, I know you're, very, you're a sensitive person, so also you've got great psychic gifts as well as healer. So, oh, Kelly, I didn't get a chance to show you. Look at my new water bottle. It's got a crystal. Oh, you're so welcome, guys. I have three of them, but Logan, my oldest son, stole my other one. It's got um, an amethyst. So I've got this one with quartz. And it's got, oh, it's got some kind of crystal inside of here. I didn't even realize this till there was water in here. It looks like it's got some carnelian. It's got two pieces within. And then I've got a pink quartz one too. Yes, Nicole. Yes. If you feel like you were drawn to it, or if you've had readings from somebody that have told you you're a healer, I used to get with a very chosen few. 
about spirit. It is the weirdest thing. There is nothing wrong with my phone. You guys all just witnessed this. You get the purple and the black, or it'll be purple and um, emerald green. And it's only happened with two other people, and now it's happened with all you. But yes, anybody can be a healer. So if you've had cards pulled for you, like I said, before I got distracted, I used to get that all the time, and I used to say, well, yeah, I guess I'm kind of a healer because I'm a nurse, but no, no. Um, what it has to do, and if you think about it, if you think about the word heal, right, with healing, when we're healing somebody, we're making them feel better. So when you ask, can anybody be a healer? Absolutely. You can be an artist. You could be a singer. You could be just doing your job with customer service, but you're giving somebody a smile that needs a smile or, you know, a compliment or a conversation. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they're sad. That really... Anything that makes somebody feel better, in a sense, is healing them, right? So yes, anybody can be a healer. If you're doing something, I believe, truly, you know, with love in your heart and for the best and highest good for somebody else or for yourself, and especially if you're making somebody feel better, because to me, that's what healing means. We're, we're, you know, giving a treatment or energy, whatever it is, to help somebody feel better. So I hope that answers your question. Your father did a reading years back on a past life in him and burned for that same reason. Interesting, steve -o. Well, there you go. And that card jumped out of the deck. I didn't even pick it. Kelly, you want to know about your past life and what happened to you? Well, you know we have numerous, numerous past lives. Hi, Chandra. So, let us see. I like this deck. This only kind of deck I didn't have was a, a past life... Um, a past life deck and then the first night I did my radio show um, what had happened I was supposed to do it for two hours and there was scheduling conflicts so that's how I met Seraphine Hurley she was on after and she asked me to join her and I joined her ever since on on the old station we were on on Mondays and Thursdays and I didn't realize what a gifted psychic she was herself and she had asked me um, got talking I ended up doing three past life readings for her because we were on for I think two or three hours and I didn't have a deck at the time so I just went with what I picked up yes we can have you were trying to be sneaky Chandra yes we can have numerous past lives oh yeah absolutely I can tell you um, there are such things as a new soul I have met at least one person that's a new soul and you can pretty well tell when somebody's a new soul um, even the one that I met is very good hearted, but um, just seems to be really naive about life, kind of really spacey, um, you know, just doesn't quite get it. Whereas, you know, when you meet somebody and they're an old soul, it's, it's hard to explain. You would know, though, if you met somebody that's a new soul, if you've been doing this for a while. And um, I didn't even pick this up about this person at first, that they were a new soul. I just knew there wasn't something quite right about them. They didn't have any mental health issues or anything like that. They just were a little, a little different. That's why I can explain it. But yeah, we have lots of past lives. Depending on who you talk to, some people think that can only have seven. I don't believe that. I believe you can have as many as you want. I mean, like I said, I'm going to try and do a video on the Akashic Records and, and things like this, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what we got here for you. I just heard stop. Okay. Hmm. Greco-Roman. So let's see what Mr. Buck has to say. Like I said, this is my newer deck, and I guess if I was doing a if I was doing a one on one reading, I had a lot more time to to be able to really, really kind of peruse this card. So interesting, the sun's shining through. Interesting shape, actually, too. If you guys can see, it almost looks like a bird, a dove. Okay. I hear kittens. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> they all get lively at this time of night. Okay, so Greco-Roman. This card indicates that you had a significant life in Greece or Rome that is influencing the situation about life or past lives, how it's influencing your life now. 
You may have noticed that you're drawn to Greco-Roman architecture, culture, and spirituality, or perhaps you've even visited areas of the Mediterranean which felt strangely familiar. And if you haven't, maybe one day when you get there, you will. It says, often when we visit a place where we've lived in other lives, we experience a sense of deja vu. Before I continue this, I'm really, really drawn to things like past lives. And the thing that always fascinates me, I've been watching a lot of videos, is children that recall their past lives. And I was watching a documentary on a couple children that remembered their past life like they had passed away and probably most of them were fairly young adults and they reincarnated very quickly within three to four years from when they had passed away. The person was born with a birthmark where they, most of these people had an injury where they had, that was the cause of death was exactly where the birth um, mark was. And these children remembered their previous families. They remembered where they lived. They remembered their whole family. And there's video of these children visiting their past life family and being able to tell them things that there's no way they would have known. It's really, really interesting. Okay, back to this. It says, during your uh, Greco-Roman lifetime, you've had experiences and relationships that formed the basis for your present life situation. You've known that you're a healer. This knowledge was acquired in previous lifetimes when you performed healings for others. Back then, your earthly needs were likely taken care of by the community. So you may struggle with the idea of charging money for healing work in this life. It's helpful to know that, that in this current Western society, everyone must charge for their work, including those who provide spiritually based services. So I don't know if that helps you or not. But if not... Who knows, that might be something that's coming up in the future for you to be drawn towards that type of thing in that area. So, it says we've got six people here, but I don't know who else popped in here or who's still here. So, let me see. So, if anybody else has a question for Spirit or you're wondering, you know, like I said, if you do have another question or have a question and more specific you, you are, the more specific I can be with the answer from Spirit. And if not, then, what time is it here? Oh, it's only 3 o'clock, <laughs> 3.06. Um, I'll do this again. Like I said, probably what's going to happen is I'll do this, start just posting my link to YouTube and getting people to come on there. Will life ever calm down? For you, you mean, Chandra? <laughs> or your kids, or... Hmm, will life ever calm down? Well, I know you're doing this because I know you well, but the, the painting uh, is a good step in the right direction. Um, it's meditative for you. Um, you're good at it. Um, I'm hearing from the Spirit, this is all about perspective. Again, being really honest with yourself about what you want. So, you have the skill, you have the opportunity, not necessarily to do it full time, but um, Night Mike, thanks so much. Thanks for popping by, I really appreciate it. And I hope that helped you with the reading. You have a great night, okay, and a great weekend. Um, whether you wanna consider this or not, and I'm still, I'm gonna remind you of this, I won't give too much detail. When you and I first met, Chandra, you talked about a, a book that you had written. I'm not going to say much else. It was for younger people. And at the time, it was really well written. You'd been encouraged to, to pursue that and publish it. But at the time, you said that there's no way you could illustrate it. And you've got a lot of skill with that. I always thought that you did. And it's something you could pursue, really pursuing the artistic perspective side of things because that's something that you could do on the side while you still have a full-time job. Eventually, if that's something you're drawn to, you know, providing for yourself, providing for your family, doing something that you're good at and possibly enjoy and a lot less stressful than, you know, what you're doing right now. I am seeing things are going to calm down for you because you're number one there. Congratulations to him too. I hear he's doing really well in school is going to be getting older and moving on with life and uh yeah things will get a little bit there you go see 
So if that's something maybe you want to pursue, I can definitely say it's going to be a lot more peaceful way of life for you, a lot less stressful, a lot more enjoyable. And um, yeah, so again, that's what I just kept hearing. It's all about perspective for you, whether or not um, you really got to be honest with yourself what you want. And again, you know, I don't know if you were here for, I, we've talked about this anyways, about, um, you know, what you put out to the universe being really, 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 really specific. Otherwise, it's just going to be bringing all kinds of different things for, well, is this what she wants? Is this what she wants? So being really honest with yourself when you say is life going to calm down, if you want it to calm down, what do you need to have happen to have it calm down? Being honest with yourself as well as if you're not sure what you need to happen you most of us definitely know what we don't want to happen so starting with that first what do you not want and if you don't want it what do you do want to not make that happen if that makes sense I'm gonna pull you a card I'm just looking for the deck here here we go uh, life purpose here Hi, Anaya, and I always, I think your name's Anaya. If I say it wrong, I'm so sorry. I've known this girl for years, Nia. She's such a sweetheart. We traded recipes. She's all the way over on the other side of the world there, and she's such a sweetheart. Love her. Making myself take time. Exactly. So, I'm hearing that time is going to become a little bit more open for you. I, just, I won't say his name, but you're number one gets a little older and um, it's going to be like I said it's all about perspective what you want Dave would you mind making me a cup of coffee please I wasn't making coffee but <laughs> <laughs> I was like, night Pam you have a great night okay and thanks so much for popping by okay I'm playing you a card here not like our usual five or six eh Chandra Ah, interesting. I don't know how you're going to find time for this. You might have to do it at home, but yoga. Your life is enhanced by yoga, stretching, and exercises. But there's a reason, there's something I want to pull for you here. Um, let me find this dude's name. Okay. There's a card that I pulled the first, before the uh, first feed went out. And there's a man by the name of... Mahavatar, I can't say it at first, Mahavatar Babaji. And he's all about soul expansion. This is from Kyle Gray's um, deck. And there's a reason why I'm pulling this. It says, this card at the time, it said, your consciousness is, is expanding. You understand the connections between all things. But what really made me remember this, this card saying about yoga, your life is enhanced by yoga, stretching, and exercising. What this says is, um... I'll just read it. It says, uh, Mahavatar means great incarnation or avatar, and Babaji means sacred father. Mahavatar Babaji is a deeply respected master yogi who was introduced to the world through the teachings of the Indian yogi Paramahansa Yogananda. Babaji, as he's called for short, is said to be over 2,000 years old and able to travel between earth and other worlds. He is said to have an invisible temple in the Himalayas that can appear to those he wants to connect with. Many believe that he is like Christ himself, bringing deep love, acceptance, forgiveness, insight, and direction, but there's another reason. Um, it said, I'll just read this whole message, it'll make more sense. So there's an extended message, it says, you may feel that you've retreated from the world recently. And I said, take what resonates with you and leave the rest, because it's this part, this other part I'm gonna get to. It says, maybe you've not been as active socially or spiritually, but this time of inner rest has really paid off. You're becoming more and more consciously aware of how connected you are to source energy and all living things. This sense of union is called yoga. So this is a different, if you will, definition of yoga, because this card is about yoga, right? It said, Yoga goes beyond physical ability and into a sense of awareness that's created through spiritual practice, meditation, and devotion to the divine. This last part says, Mahavatar Babaji, the yogic father, is here to inspire that fire of union within you so that you can understand how your thoughts and actions are creating the waves of energy that form your life. And I think that relates to your question, will things slow down? 
So, exactly, but that's why I wanted to read this to you because this isn't just about doing yoga. There's more involved with yoga than just the physical aspect. That was why I wanted to pull this card for you um, because I had read it earlier and remembered reading this. So, interesting with yoga. So I hope that it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So, hi, John. Welcome. So... I hope that answered your question. Let me put all my little cardies back together here. Make sure I got everything in the right box. So, well, we're down to four people. I don't know who's still here. I know you're here. There was John that popped in here. I don't know who else is here because I think everybody else is heading off to bed here. So, yeah, that's why I pulled that card, Chandra, because like I said, when it said yoga, I said, nope, there's more to this than just the yoga yoga. So, are you able to do... Yeah, I can do one more for you. I just went, um, Kelly, I was wondering what messages my ancestor has for me. He had named me his little phoenix. Okay, that's hard for me, what your ancestor has for you. Oh, let me think about this. I know what you're asking, and I don't think it will. Uh, no, I don't have a deck that's gonna answer. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Don't fall. I don't know why they want me to use this deck. This is called Magical Dimensions. Actually, I really like this deck. Open. It's locked close here. It's got a symbol on the inside. That uh, keeps the cards clear. So you want to know. You know, it's hard to always get time to meditate, though, Chandra, isn't it? Yeah, I find that too. I've been trying to make more time for it. Hang on, I got all these cards all screwed up because I think my cats were into them. Hang on. Well, these are really screwed up. Hang on there, uh, Kelly, while I straighten these out. Um, okay, there we go. Boy, these cats really did mix these up. Holy kapoodle. Okay, let's see. Okay, now there we go. This deck, actually this deck is expensive. Um, I think it was almost 60 with tags, but you'll see why once I pull this once I pull the card and explain the messages, you'll see why it's expensive. It's an excellent deck. So you want to know what you why what they have to say to you. Because I asked your guides if it was mediumship and they said no. Not mediumship. And then I was thinking, I do have a new deck I've never used, but I gotta play with it for a while. It is, I'll show you guys this. I've had it for a while. I actually have a couple. I have the Kawaii Tarot. <laughs> it's really cute, actually. It's got really cute cards in it. Look at the inside. I have to show it off. Ah, I'm backwards here. That's why you guys would wonder why I'm doing stupid things. And it's got little decks of cards. It's quite cute. This is the deck. The Mayan Oracle, a galactic language of love. Just haven't been drawn to this one yet. Maybe this weekend I'll play with it a little bit. Okay. But we'll get back to the stick. Yeah, you're going to see why. I was thinking, Kelly, the deck that I have here, the keys um, of the Arturians, but I heard no. So, it's not a lot of decks I've seen with anything... You know, Egyptian phoenixes, stuff. It doesn't mean they don't exist. I just haven't seen them. Nobody really even asked me any dream questions tonight. I had a few, but... Okay, hang on. Oh, there's a little bite mark in here. Oh, that little cat of mine. My goodness. He really got in here. Okay. All right. So what's come through for you, Kelly? It says the Ice Queen. The number 22, so pay attention to the number, and it says introspection, self-analysis, and fortitude. It's a beautiful card. But there, um, I like the book with this one because there's so much information that comes through with it. 
This one's kind of hard to find uh, the answers. They're not always in alphabetical order. Please be in alphabetical order. Oh, there you are, good. Okay, the Ice Queen. Now this, the reason why this deck is so cool, Kelly, is it tells you the healing color ray. It gives you a celestial interpretation. It gives you an oracle interpretation. And it gives you the companion crystals you can use as well as companion essential oil. So this image, so this little ice queen, I almost want to call her a snow queen. Ice sounds so cold. Uh, this is connected with the silver white color ray. Now when we're talking about color rays, you can use that for healing. You can help use that to help you connect with your guides or your ancestors. It's really cool, so you might want to use that color. Also hearing uh, images of fire, obviously, if he calls you his little phoenix. If I read that correctly. Yeah, so fire's associated with that as well, I'm hearing. So celestial interpretation is more of a, um, like closer to your guides, the higher, higher realms, whereas the oracle interpretation is more information that you might use in everyday life. So celestial interpretation. The Ice Queen resonates to personal power and liberta liberation from the shadow self. This revealing ray ignites strength and fortitude, calling forth a presence from the depths of the soul to penetrate through the most difficult of challenges and trials. Fusing a bridge between the powers of nature, soul light power, and the darkness that is a part of the light self, meaning the shadow self. I added that part, but that's what that means. A new butterfly is born as it sheds its old self and steps into the newness and light of its own being. And then the oracle interpretation. Go into a space of deep inner reflection, for it is a time of going within and is required in order to face the shadow self. Yeah, I knew that was going to come up. So... What I'm thinking with your ancestor calling you this little phoenix. Now, phoenixes, as they're rumored to be, right, they get to a certain age, they burst into flame, there's nothing but ashes, and they rise from the ashes. So, part of this, I think, has to do as well is lovingly looking at that shadow self, which we all have, looking at the things with the shadow, and that develops a lot when we're growing as a child. There's certain parts that you hear growing up, such as, um, you know, I'm just going to give you an example. Say you've got a child that's a real cut up, like they like to be the center of attention and act and sing and whatever, and you know, they get admonished by the parent for, you know what, this isn't the right time, no, we don't want to hear this right now, we've got company, and then the child sort of develops a little bit of shame and embarrassment because you know, maybe all they wanted to do was be a little kid. So a lot of us, what we do is we actually kind of, thanks hon, you kind of internalize that and we carry that with us always. And when you think about it, we are everything. So we're not just light, we're dark. We're not just joy. There may be anger. You know what I'm saying? There's positive and negatives with us, but a lot of us don't, like I often talk about um, and no one is on my radio show and I, you know, when I'm talking with people or teaching them, we all wear a mask and this is no judgment, but we all do. We only show to others what we wish for them to see, which we feel is socially acceptable or pleasing. So the parts, there's other parts. I'll give you an example of a workshop that I was on on shadow work. Um, the girl that was doing it at the time, she wasn't doing that type of work, but she was in, um, kind of a male dominated field that had to do with merchandising and she was at a sales conference and she was standing up on the stage doing a presentation and this woman put her hand up and the woman in the audience said to the woman on the stage you're a bitch and this is this girl's like what like you know kind of wanted to say like f you whatever but she couldn't because it was professional but as they led to a conversation during this conference the woman in the audience said Please don't take that the wrong way. What I'm saying to you is, especially being in a male-dominated field, have there been times when you've had to be a bitch? 
and the girl on the stage, and I think her name was uh, Katie or something, I'll call her. So Katie had said, well, yeah, like sometimes I get pushed around and my orders don't come and I'm kind of perceived not as seriously as say my male counterparts. She said, exactly. So what this woman was trying to bring out in Katie was the fact that we have it all. We have not only light, but dark, but the parts that we don't want to own, or you may hear, you know, growing up, well, we don't want to be like those people. So we internalize that. That becomes part of our shadow self. And we kind of lug that around with us because it's still there. It doesn't go away. So working with the shadow is addressing those parts that we don't want to accept or believe in and sending ourselves love, sending ourselves acceptance with that, sending that it's okay, that that, that makes up all of us. Okay, and it's just the way it is. We kind of live in a yin yang existence, right? Like we can't have one without the other in this existence that we are here on earth. But accepting it, loving it, owning it, forgiving yourself for it, and that's kind of what's involved with shadow work. Spirit wanted you to know that, and mainly your ancestor. That's what they wanted me to explain to you. So, um, let me go on with this. So, I'm going to start all over with the oracle interpretation. Go into a space of deep inner reflection, for it is a time of going within and is required in order to face the shadow self. Perhaps you need to retreat and do some self-growth exploration. I'm hearing journaling from your ancestor. Um, no judgment, just love, acceptance, flowing almost like water. Put out those flames. If you feel lost or confused about your situation, just go within. It takes strength and courage to reveal the truth. And sometimes the shadows attempt to hide light from you. Honor both the light and the dark, like he said, the yin and the yang, but choose the light. Now the companion crystals you can use, whether this may be in meditation or thinking about doing some journaling, whatever it may be, snow quartz or phantom quartz, and the companion essential oil that you can use is wintergreen. So I hope that helps. Mm. Oh, we got seven people here. Am I missing somebody? We've got John. If you anybody's here that I haven't acknowledged, please feel free to say hello. Or if you've got a question that you know of spirit, or you're looking for some direction, or whatever it may be, um, feel free to go ahead and ask it. And the more specific you are, the more specific I can be. I don't know if you guys heard Del. <laughs> He was making some tea and I said, oh, could you make me some coffee? Well, I wasn't making coffee, <laughs> but he did make me some. <laughs> so, mm hmm Well, I hope that helps you, Kelly, but. So, my flower glass is on here. Oh, God, I'm so backwards, see? Like I said, I turn this around though so you guys can see the cards, otherwise everything's backwards. My iPhone 7 here is dying on me. So, yes, that was... It might be your ancestor, like you said, that's been connecting with you. Hopefully that didn't die on you guys. It might be your ancestor that um, has been connecting with you, trying to get you to um, be drawn, you know? so. Like I said, I was talking about this earlier. You're still here, Joe. Welcome. Um, like I said, there's no coincidences, right? So when you keep getting an attraction or a sign or something keeps showing up or whether it's a deja vu, especially in a short period of time, I truly believe that's your guides um, giving you a sign. A lot of our guides speak in symbols. A lot of our, you know, they're not always... I think where I really learned this is when I took my mediumship course because I'm so clairaudient and connecting with spirit on the other side. I guess I was just expecting to be able to hear, but just like everybody communicates differently on this earthly plane, so do they on the other side. So some use symbolism, some use color, smell, could be anything. So you're welcome. We had a spirit come through. She said her name is Lisa is here to help my path on my last is here to help my last video my guys told me she's an angel is this true well that's the interesting thing steve is that um there are hundreds upon billions of angels and you know lisa may not be her real name 
it could be a short form of what her name is, or it could be Lisa. I can show you one deck I have in particular that will, is, is it this one? No, it's not. Hang on. Um, let me find it and I'll show this to you because they certainly don't sound very angelic, these names. I think this is it. Uh, is it messages from your angels? See, it is it. So this deck here, uh, messages from your angels, they're like all everyday women's names. I don't know if there's, well, I guess I could check in the guidebook. It might be in alphabetical order. I'll see if there's a Lisa in there for you. It doesn't mean there isn't just because her name's not there. Yeah, there's no Lisa, but there's names like um, Yvonne, Teresa, Vanessa, Sonia, Patience, Opal, Layla, Fiona, Bethany. So there's lots of different names in there. So I wouldn't doubt it if, um, like I said, a lot of times too, like if you really want to hear what your spirit guide's names are, you know, come, you could take a couple deep, deep breaths and, you know, you're able to quiet your mind and it's quiet around you. If you ask the question within your mind's eye, what are the names of my spirit guides? Um, the first names you hear are the names of your guides. Now, you know, I remember I heard Catherine of one of mine and I was like, Catherine, I wasn't even thinking of that name. It's a very common name, but a lot of times our guides want to be able to connect with us and they're not going to give us some name. <laughs> like I know one of my friends that's a psychic, I believe one of his guides, he's uh, like an intergalactic and from where he's from, he told me that the name would take five days in our time to be able to say this guy's full name so he just gave him a short form of the name mm -hmm. so like I said I wouldn't doubt it if she said her name was Lisa I mean trust it and see what happens you guys are able to feel energy so you're able to know whether you know, it's positive or lower vibrational energy plus the thing is is that's what came through for you. I trust it. Like I said, the more I open this door, the more I always say how infinitely tinier than a one-celled organism I feel because it's just so vast when it comes to knowledge and none of us really know. We don't. We've either got to go on somebody else's interpretation or their knowledge or what they've learned or they've experienced. And I truly don't I always say I don't think we'll ever really know until we leave this lifetime and pass on into the next. Glue? I have no idea what that is, Chandra. <laughs> Glue? <laughs> no idea. That's okay. Um, you just flew pink? I just flew pink. Okay. I have no idea what you meant by that. Or did I go pink? I don't know if you were on here when that happened, Chandra. It went purple and black. Like, you know how, because all I'm going to odor. Me and her, this happens with, and it happens with my friend Leanne. It's not happening with anybody else with my phone. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, I just glowed pink. Oh, oh I'm pink. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know how it used to do that, Chandra? It did it in my life. Um, I think you had just popped out and you popped back in, and it did it. So there you go. I was absolutely shocked. We were talking about healing, actually. So the first time we didn't use a ghost box, it was EVP through video on my phone. Oh, cool. Yeah, it did. Well, you, if you go back on the live, it's probably probably about an hour ago. And for those of you that are listening, maybe didn't see it happen. Um, the first person to happen with was Chandra. So whenever we talk about spirit, no, it was actually like a darker, looked like almost like a black. It's happened like that before. Um, but first, um, Chandra and I, when we were talking, it used to, and it was usually about spirit and stuff like that, and angels, it would go half emerald green and half purple with lines. And this one went really dark on the one side. It's done that before, but still the same purple lines. And there's nothing wrong with my phone. Do not hide the truth. Kelly, I was curious what my angel meant by do not hide the truth. Well, what I'm hearing, Kelly, is that 
maybe you're not being truthful with somebody for fear of hurting them or maybe not truthful with yourself and that what your angel is asking you by not hiding the truth but by being very loving coming from a positive space but also by choosing your words to be able to share the truth like I said, we all wear masks with one another showing what we really want the rest of the world to see. So you might want to even ask your angel, because if your angel told you this, asking them would be the best person to tell, you know, to give you exactly what they meant. But for me, that's what it means. Do not hide the truth. So if there's anything that you're hiding, and only you know that, and again, no judgment in any way, um, why are you hiding it? Ask yourself that. Why are you hiding it? Maybe what are you not being truthful about? Maybe not to yourself. That's why I keep hearing you're not being truthful with yourself. But like I said, you'll know best. And next time you're in a meditation or, you know, it's just quiet, ask your angel what they meant by that. They'll be able to give you the answer. If they gave you that guidance, they'll be able to tell you exactly what they meant by it. Yeah, I think it's still Archangels too. Yeah, with the purple. Like I said, it was about an hour back. And um, it was when... It was yeah, Nicole or Pam was asking me... Um, I think it was Nicole, can everyone be a healer? It was around that time and that's when it happened. There's nothing wrong with my phone. It's done it with both my phones when I've talked about angels. So I know it's not my phone's. It's really, really weird. I take pictures of it all the time, usually, though, to prove it. It's really, really cool. Well, that okay. Well, then you're answering your own question, Kelly. You have reasons for hiding the truth about yourself, but that's why maybe your angels are telling you don't hide it. Maybe you don't need to. I said something personal. Maybe it might take a little bit of journaling, or I find a lot of times when I have a question. For my guides or angels if I'm not able to hear it I'll get into a calmer state do some deep breathing clear my mind and ask the question and then do automatic writing so for those of you who might not know what automatic writing is you just do exactly what I said clear your mind doing some deep breaths relaxing asking the question you got a piece of paper and a pen I usually need a lot of paper because once it starts, by the end of it, I usually can't read my handwriting. I'm writing so fast. I don't question it. Just start writing. It's almost like you're the stenographer. You're just taking notes. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, my loves, I think I'm going to sign off here. Yeah, try it. See how it works. Because it is, what time? Yeah, it's 336 and um, my voice is starting to go on me now. I'm surprised it lasted this long. And now we got Val here, and I'm just about to sign off. But I will do this again. Like I said, I've been sick for the last month and a half, probably longer. You know, the whole month of January, and then almost three weeks into February. So, But I'll do this again. And like I said, I'm going to be doing some lives on YouTube. So... I'm still not 100%, but thank you. I'm starting to feel a bit better, but I shouldn't be pushing. Every time I push myself, I end up back in bed. So, Well, thank you. That's what makeup does. I need to color my hair. You can see. Wait, over here. <laughs> Anyways. Well, thank you. This was supposed to, excuse me, this was supposed to be for New Year's. But, like I said, I just couldn't get over this. So... Well, you know what? Before I go, Val, I am going to answer your question. So can you give me a little bit more information, my love? Is your dad ill or... I'm picking up that he is, but um, could you be a little bit more specific? And I'll answer your question before... I was just about to sign off, but I don't want to leave you hanging like that. Night, Joe. Send, send uh, my love to your beloved and you. You guys have a great weekend, Okay. I'll talk to you very soon. Yeah, after I answer Val's question, then I'm going to sign off. I don't want to leave her hanging like this. So, Val, that's what I'm picking up that your dad's ill. I don't know if he is or not. It could be something else. It's just energetically wise. Like I said, if you're a little bit more specific with me, then I can be a little bit more specific from spirit about your answer.
Okay, you guys have a great weekend. Oh, this is, thanks, Devo. No, I, um, this is pretty bad. I've been with Dell for over 11 years. I never knew how to make me coffee. And with me being sick, I wasn't eating anything. And I even said this to him. I said, do you realize that you don't even know how to make my coffee? This was a couple months ago. Well, I'm happy to report that every morning when I wake up now, there's a cup of coffee. Yes, I see that. Yeah, okay. You said your mom passed, so that's wondering, is that why you're wondering if your dad's okay? Because I, like I said, when I was wondering if he was feeling ill, I'm just going on energy, so it's really, really low. Just curious. Yes, my show is starting again soon, Joe. It was supposed to start at the beginning, of, like in January, but with me being sick, I haven't talked to Kat, so I'm going to call her this weekend and send her some moolah for the show but yeah I'm hoping to start because I suppose I'd like to start on a Sunday though because it's every night plus I've been talking to lots of people as guests so I kind of like a starting date so that uh, I can get my guests and I had a bunch of great guests planned for um, for January and then all that went down with L&M so yeah for those of you that don't know I am with WHM out of Alabama now so the angel rock is coming back thank you and thank you for the water bottle Thing. Yes, I have the quartz, the pink quartz, and the amethyst, but I'm, getting, I'm just waiting for a value. You said, so your mom passed away, so you're wondering if your dad's going to be okay? I'm guessing you're wondering if he's going to be able to cope. Is he going to be able to manage? All I'm hearing from spirit for you, and um, I've said this quite a few times, but I don't think I've talked to you before, Val. Um, I am a nurse, and I've worked quite closely in palliative care. So what happens when we lose a loved one is, and I love the series, it's out there on Facebook, it's, it's been done over in the UK about death and dying, is when we lose a loved one or a friend or whoever it may be, we have this horrible, not horrible, but really devastating, heavy grief. It's normal. We all have it and it really lowers our vibration like our vibrational energy. So it's really hard to feel when our loved ones are around us in spirit, and that's okay. But the thing about grief is, over time, that grief never goes away. But what happens is, and the way this video showed it was beautiful, it was like a bunch of little scribbles, this big ball of grief. But what happens over time, that ball never goes away, but a new sense of normal grows into what that life will be. And that's what it's going to take for your dad is time. There is no time period for grief or grieving. So many people will say very insensitively if they've never lost somebody, well, you know, it's been enough time now. Don't you think it's about time you started moving on? And the thing with grieving is it just doesn't come with death and dying. Anytime we lose something that's of importance to us, could be a job, could be our health, could be anything like that. There's a process that we go through. And like I said, there's no time period on this. It's different for everybody else. So I'm sensing that's what your dad's going through right now is this deep, deep, deep sense of loss, almost to the point of a depression. And it's going to take time. Nothing's going to take that away for him except your continued love and support. Um, almost hearing that he's almost pushing people away. Men grieve differently than women do. Um, I'm going to hear that it's all up to him. I'm hearing that it's all up to him, love. Spirit, this happens. Um, like I said, you take that from as a sign. That's your mom. Because I don't, I was, that's what I was talking about. If you were here, you might have just signed on after Val. Whenever I talk about spirit, it's usually a sign from the angels that they're around. There's nothing wrong with my phone. It's only happened with two people. I've never had it happen during a live, and it just happened when you, I was answering your question as well as somebody else's earlier. Um, it's just going to take time, and, um, you know, I, there's not a lot I can tell you in the way that's going to make your dad feel better, except that 
our loved ones never leave us. They never ever leave us. I, we are eternal spiritual beings with a soul that goes on forever. Long after our body's gone, we can choose to incarnate into another lifetime if we wish. But what happens is our loved ones can be with us anytime. Anytime we think of them, they leave us signs. Some people find dimes out of nowhere. Sometimes people find feathers. For me, it's hearts. Not about me, but just so you know, it can be anything of significance. So what happens is you can say clean the whole house and all of a sudden there's a white feather, gray feather, could be any color feather, or like I said, a lot of family members choose dimes. So um, they're signs from my loved ones because they know with that grieving process, it really lowers our energy, our vibrational energy. And to connect with spirit, our vibrational energy needs to be higher. But our loved ones know that, so that's why they leave us signs. And they're there for every celebration. They're there, um, somebody that was on here earlier was talking about they hold our babies before they're born, kiss them, and she just about started to cry because she's expecting a granddaughter and I'd actually been shown that I didn't want to say anything and I don't know everybody here that I'm doing the reading for. Um, your dad can talk to her anytime he wants. Um, they visit us in our dreams. You know, if your dad maybe says he can't feel her, I don't know how open your dad would be to it, but keeping a journal by the bedside before we hop out of bed, a lot of times our loved ones visit us because that's the easiest way to connect because we're most open when we're sleeping. And what happens is when we wake up and remember a dream, but by the time we hop out of bed, run to the bathroom or brush our teeth or make a cup of coffee, we've forgotten 90 to 99% of the dream. That's why it's important just to jot down a few notes um, so that's one way. Um, I was talking to somebody else earlier about the fact that with the palliative care situation about, you know, pictures hold energy too. So a picture of her talking to that. He, he doesn't need that anyways. Their love is that strong. But I mean, talking to her, she hears him asking for her help. Um, because what our loved ones want is they want us to live a happy life joyful life. They understand that we grieve, but when our loved ones pass over to the other side, there's no more pain, there's no more sadness, there's nothing like that, and they're happy over there, and that's what they want for us to be. But I will pull a card for you, honey, and you can pass this along to your dad if you want. This is from a deck called Messages from Heaven. This is by Jackie Newcomb. Now you believe me, girl. Now you believe me, Shonda. I told you it happened. <laughs> I told you. Like I said, it, it happens when I'm talking about spirit, but it's never happened during a live before. It's happened twice tonight. So I don't know if that helps you or not. Um, God, I had so many names tonight, Val. I don't know if that helped you or not, but may not even still be there but if you are if not hopefully you can catch us on the replay I'll pull a card for you these are like I said these are messages from heaven yeah it is cool when it happens and always happens when I'm talking about spirit there's nothing wrong with my phone and like I said I've, it's happened on both my phones so I know and it's always when I'm talking about spirit so either that or doing readings crazy part was when you came back it was quite different and the first words I heard was with spirit <laughs> cool okay oops okay so Val this is for you it said changes can bring you new life and energy and we I will hold your hand so I'm hearing that your mom is around and she will be there all always around your dad and that she supports him and is hoping to bring help bring new situations new people to help him bring a little bit of joy and some energy into his life and she'll be holding his hand all along the whole journey while this happens is number 25 here I want to pay attention to that for your dad or for you that may have some significance 
I always check the, the book with these decks too because there's a little bit more information sometimes when it comes to uh, mediumship. Okay, hang on. Okay, so I'll repeat the message. It says, changes can bring you new life and energy. I will hold your hand. You can be excited at new things entering your life or you can be worried. You hold the key to how you feel about something, so I encourage you to think positively. Be ready for wonderful new opportunities that are about to enter your life. They tell you, we are right here by your side as you try new things, or I am right here by your side as you try new things. You will be just fine. Now, if that's not the answer to your question, love, that's exactly what you asked. I'm gonna go back to it and see, but I think you asked, will my dad be okay? And this, the last question, answer in this question is, you'll be just fine. So I hope that helps. I send you so much love and light and healing. I hope that, uh, you know, you can pass that along to your dad. And I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, guys, on that note, I am signing off before we get some more people. The other side of the world's going to be waking up soon. <laughs> they're not already awake. Anyways, I love you guys. Thanks for joining in and I will talk to you soon. Who knows? I haven't got much planned this weekend. Maybe I felt a little rusty tonight. It took me forever and then I go tuck Jesse in and everything else. So I didn't get on here as soon as I wanted to. Oh, you're welcome, Val. I didn't know if you were still there or not. I hope that helps. Okay, so that was the answer to your question right at the end of that card. You will be fine. And that was, I, I did that reading for your dad. So um, I think that was your answer. Okay, so you guys have a wonder. I love you guys too. You're just awesome, all of you too. I love all of you too. Okay, I send you all so much love and light. Have a fantabulous weekend and I will talk to you soon. If you did get a reading, by the way, before I go, please, if you get time, leave me some feedback. I'd really appreciate it on my business page. And uh, if and please sign up for my YouTube page. It's uh, Laura. What is it? The Angel Rock with Laura Lee Potvin, and you can see the link on this uh, live. I'd love to have you join in. We're gonna be doing some lives over there. Have a great weekend, guys. Mwah.